damn, Gary. Some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadent, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT Blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. <laughs> See if I can get to the right window here. There we go. Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, yeah, are you kidding me? Fucking fuck you. Fucking fuck that shit. Fuck it right in the ear hole. Hey, little fuck. You have just come in from a hard day's work and you put on your silk nightie and slip between the sheets for a well-deserved rest. But what is this? It's midnight. Your window open, the breeze filters in, and a dark, mysterious stranger enters. Who is he? Why is he here? He shouldn't be, but you don't mind. What is leaving on the side by your bed? Why? It's a box of milk tray chocolates. <laughs> you wake up and he's gone. But the chocolates are still there. Oh well. Better talk in. Maybe he'll finger you with his penis. No! I had a nose ring, but I sniffed a line of coke and then it got stuck in my ass. Hi! Interesting, isn't it? Not a he, not a she. Not like anything you've ever seen. An enhanced humanoid. I am now a Zem Zia Zia Zem self. Um. Come on, motherfuckers! No. Oh! Fuck! God damn it, man! Uh, I'm I gonna make the shit of your poop! No! I am not a piece of meat. I am not a piece of meat for you people to just look at like a juicy fucking meal, okay? Fuck off yeah. permanently. This is the part of the show where we clap for each other. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We're awesome. Or, 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 or. This is the only clap I want. Evadered. Wow. It's red. <laughs> is it red? Evaded. He 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 evaded to red. Evadered to red. Yes. Uh, welcome to Friday Night Tights, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to do it again. Because I can. Because I can. <laughs> 
Uh, um, we're, I just want to point out that we're missing a couple of people today, and uh, I'm very disappointed in their excuses. I'm just going to say that right now. <laughs> Cordblack Garrett needs to take care of his kids or something because his <laughs> wife, unfortunately, got injured. <laughs> totally gay. Uh, and then Odin, I forgot. Can we even say what Odin's doing? It's. it's I think he announced it on. He announced media, it last. So I think yeah. He, he like, in last week. His wife is giving birth. Well, last time I checked, he's not giving birth. He could be here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah why don't so, you bring the laptop to delivery room? You're probably yeah. just sitting there yeah. while like she's waiting. You know. The hospital yeah. probably has Wi-Fi. Yep. They typically do. <laughs> They're so selfish. They don't think about me. Yeah. They don't. They don't think about the audience either. They don't oh, the think audience. about you or you. Yeah. 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 Bro, what care. was that? that that tweet that went viral of the dude who had just had Domino's pizza. Eating oh, while well, his like, wife's in labor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wasn't it like this is Fit. really hard work or something like that? I have been yeah. there, done that. We need. You gotta, do, you gotta eat while you're in there. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, it might starve to death. Yeah. That's... <laughs> what, you I... don't like placenta? <laughs> no, well, <laughs> not raw. <laughs> Trying to give it up for lunch. Yeah, yeah, you're not. You're not gonna. You're you don't not want gonna, placenta on pizza. Maybe if you fry it up with some garlic or something. You're not going to be eating if it's a C-section, okay? You're just not. Uh, Why? You don't get it? It doesn't like flop out. It doesn't come with. Uh, it comes after, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. It's bloody. What do you mean, doesn't I'm, it? Just, you're in the I medical field. I've not done it before. Give yeah. birth. Jeez. And we have. Yeah. Well, I've I've been in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm yeah. more of an expert. It ain't, it ain't yeah. pretty. I'm, I, <laughs> it ain't pretty, but I He's ate afterwards. Present. No problem. Went to work too. Yeah. Went to work selling comic books. I didn't feel bad at all. It's like she's got this. It's all right. She's sewed up, ready to go. I'm off. There you go. Uh, all right. Uh, As what's up? I'm still a bit pooly, but I'm trying to get better. Bit what? What the fuck? Pooly? 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 Bit pooly? 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 No one what? knows what that means. A pool of poo. I'm bit ill. <laughs> okay. It's not you're feeling sick? well. Pooly. Who? Are you trying to say poorly? I don't understand I, New Zealand talk. I stream talk. with fucking philistines. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's <laughs> philistines. You know, I've, I've philistines noticed that. Philistines if they're Jewish, I think. <laughs> yeah. As, <laughs> as, you, you sound like you have a bit of an accent. Are you from a foreign country? Yes, it's called Australia, oh. you cunt. <laughs> well, that sounded very Australian, so I'd believe you. There you go. <laughs> well, there's the stream screwed already. Sorry. <laughs> oh, as uh, it was great meeting you in person. Yeah. Uh, I know you missed Oh, me. yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that, it seems so long ago now. It, it's nearly two weeks, but nearly it's just over weeks. a week and a half, man. And you're Crazy. still sick, and I, I didn't catch anything. Just wanted to point that out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> High week incubation period. Uh, well, God, I hope not. I have work to do. Oh, I hope so. I hope you, I hope you fucking. <laughs> I hope you puke everywhere. I hope you you're shitting in your pants. I hope you're shivering. Uh, I can't do I can't do the real BBC this week. I'm, I'm all, oh, good. Good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so violent here. God. We're, we're such great friends here. I just feel we like are. And for big so much love. love. Yeah. Feel the love. Yeah. He misses me. That's a, that's his way of missing. Yeah. Me. <laughs> uh, hi, Shad. What's up, man? Well, I'm back in Australia, as you can actually see. You know, back on the set. Uh, jet lag is kicking me in the balls. Uh, but it helped. You know, getting ready FNT. I was up at two a.m. this morning. So hey, uh, that, that's a that's a win. Um, still trying to get through real time, right? And oh, uh, and yeah. oof. So Ooh, I actually recorded, yeah, I recorded mm. the episode review yesterday, and the SD card was full, and I lost the entire thing. So, oh no! Oh, oh, no. Oh, that was great. Oh, I, was, I was in such uh, a good mood. You don't uh, so record directly to your computer I, I, using I, an SD card. All the backups, for some reason, the screen recording on the computer stopped, uh, and like every redundancy failed. Damn, time. that's a feat, so, dude. Yeah, I was I was pissed and I was so annoyed that I I I I, I was out of the zone. I couldn't do the review, so it's gonna come late, you know, um, uh, on it. But uh, well, wow, yeah, Wheel of Time is still crap and very contradictory. There's there's a character in there who's like one of the most evil beings ever, and he sends one of the other characters on this convoluted plot because he's prophesied now to kill 
one of the main characters, which is the very character he's trying to recruit to his side and is telling everyone not to kill. So that's the logic of the show at the moment. It, it's, it's doing doing great. No, it's a complete piece of crap. <laughs> Uh, I heard it's just got so a lot of women in it, so I was like, yeah. no thanks. Are- yeah, I write it off as soon as I see that. Yeah, it's a bunch of middle-aged women, too. And they're supposed to be, according to Shad, and they're supposed to be younger and prettier, and they're just kind of older and mid. At yeah, they went out of their way to kind of uh, averageify all the uh, or heaps of the characters. Um, and uh, that, like the women have a strong role in the book, but it's an even balance, 50 50. And so, but not in the show. Uh, now, all the male characters are incompetent losers. They're cowards and they barely get any attention at all. And when they do, it's just to make a mockery of them. And it was just another case of that in this most recent episode. So, yeah, Wheel of Time is, continues to be an absolute, you know, disgrace. The adaptation, the books are great. Read the books, not the show. And nobody's given a crap about it this time around. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, there is so little interest in it. Um, like uh, barely anyone talks about it online. Um, ne- barely anything comes across my feed, but there's still, you know, the diehard fans who love it because they're activists and this is their show. It panders mm-hmm. to them. And so they will go out of their way to defend it to the death. Uh, and right. as we've seen, uh, activists uh, don't buy anything. They don't buy shit. Mm. <laughs> no, because they don't work and don't have any money. Nope. They're freeloaders. <laughs> Yeah. Turns out the modern audience is the same as the past audience. They like yes. good stuff and do not like mm. bad stuff. Mm. Weird. Well, I unless so, the modern audience is a middle aged woman again. Well, then she would just get book. cast who, in Wheel who of Time. Who wrote the show? <laughs> yeah. Writing for an audience of one. Uh, who wrote The Witcher? Yeah, that middle aged woman who wrote The Witcher. Uh, she should be back in the audience and not writing anything. She Hulk <laughs> as well. And She Hulk? Look, Shad's showing his. Talking about She Hulk is brilliant. I have the world, Robert. (laughs) This is, yep. First book of the Wheel of Time. That's what you want to get into. It's the Wheel of Time. It's one of the greatest, you know, fantasy series ever written. It's up there with some of the one of the all the best. It's always been considered. I don't know. It looks pretty thick. Uh, It's It's got words in it. (laughs) It has a it has a map in the cover. It's sold already. Do I have to Uh, sleep to read it? Do you have to what? <laughs> Quit to read it. Uh, I think you already are. You, yeah, you, wouldn't you be fine with that? You do for any, everything extra goes, so. Yeah. You squint Everyone when you drive, is... you squint when you scream, oh. you squint when you eat. I think you'll be fine. How do you even see in the sun? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Vulcan. She got a extra eyelid, you know, protection. <laughs> That's why Asians don't have eyelids. It's hidden. <laughs> Oh. It's like a side, like a like a lizard person, yeah, like a side tr- blink. <laughs> blinking. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that mf is not real. It's not real. <laughs> it's not real. And neither was she. Oh well. No. Oh, yeah, all no. her like Instagram posts seem so fake. The wonder she just put her feet out there for everybody it was really weird too. It was like, oh. yeah. Put her, put her feet on full display. Wow. That, re- okay. that, that got wow. as his attention. Someone mentioned feet. Yeah, yeah, as all, hey. <laughs> hey. Like, like, come on. Feet. Like, that's one of the first things I thought of. Like, because her feet were so prominently displayed in this first picture she posted of herself. It was just like really weird. There, you know, there's going to be dudes that are immediately screenshotting, zooming in, and jerking to her feet. What's her name again? Uh, uh, Rodriguez. Feet team crazy face. Uh, Victoria. Something Gomez. Gomez. Uh, more like more like Tomas. Goma- Tiffany Gomas. Hey. Maybe Gomas. Like, yeah. Gomas. Tiffany Tomas. Gomas. Yeah. Gomas. But it's not Gomez. Go find my stash. Go find my. She's more probably like filed Gomez. a trademark for that motherfucker is not real. Like already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. You know it. Yeah. She probably bought that motherfucker's not real dot com already. <laughs> if she's smart. Did you see the, yeah, the other smart, Instagram model that that tried to copy her by doing a tantrum in the airplane and no one cared? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Women. Hey, this, this one. Oh, you mean the this picture. Model? I think this what pic- we're not talking about enough is this poor lizard person who was discriminated against on uh, this flight. Right? What, <laughs> yeah. what about this person's feelings? We haven't even or, seen the lizard Mark person. Mark Zuckerberg's fine, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do we got there? This is the, the first picture she posted. Oh, yeah. It's just oh, like. Yeah. 
like oh dog, yeah, yeah dogs yeah. out for everybody so. uh, <laughs> i mean she's got good feet good ankles yeah i you know no yeah but who that. sits in the middle of the kitchen nobody yes. sits like nobody that. No, no, I'm, not like that. I'm telling wait, wait, wait. you my wife does that all the time she just sits there <laughs> in the middle of the kitchen no well that's because <laughs> she's chained to the fucking cooker right. that's why uh, whose kitchen like is that, that fucking clean so, too yeah, yeah really i know I, I obviously a woman like who doesn't ready. care about her job look at look how embarrassed I am. There's me asking her to come on Simcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> so the other person who's simping is fucking oh my god, Chrissy. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> Not, just that own it, like Chrissy. She was getting ready for a YouTube apology video because they always uh, sit down on the floor in front of the kitchen and stuff. It started off like, <sighs> yeah. Okay, guys. And the dog comes along and sits and by her. I, I don't know how I'm going to do this video, doggy. I didn't want to make this video. Yeah. But uh, I had a Mexican come and clean my kitchen so I can sit <laughs> on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <professional> makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Oopsies. Oopsies. Ah, uh, hey. Uh, if she's called Gomez, then did she contribute at least half of the. Never mind, let's hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about nerd stuff in a minute, guys, but we got to get through the introductions. Hi, Ryan. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Good Ron looks fat in Soka. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the first thing I noticed. Oh. <laughs> He's slouchy. It's weird. I don't, <laughs> Lars Mickelson's not like a fat guy or anything, but. Whether it's just he was a little out of shape for this, whether it was the uniform, whether it was his posture, didn't look good. Who said All he the had the posture? Who said he had the posture of a seahorse? I think Razor was- Fist. <laughs> 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 oh, that was so good. Space oh, Admiral uh, Elon. Yeah. We'll be talking yeah, about yeah, Elon Throne, Ahsoka, Elon D's nuts because uh, it was. Uh, wait, it's dude. It's this repeated pattern we see Ryan all with every Disney Star Wars show and every <laughs> Disney Marvel show. It's when it starts, yay! You're just a hater, and then we get to like the key jangling episode. People go fucking nuts, and then the series finishes, and all of a sudden it's just dead silence. It's back to oh, that really did suck, and it was nothing. And like, <laughs> how many times do we have to go through this? Like, Anakin just came back a year ago, and people are acting like this is the first time he came back. Can Didn't not move? Uh, Angry Joe but, call it stellar television? A- Angry Joe liked Star Trek Discovery. That's my <laughs> that explains everything right yeah. there. Yeah, like I, the I'd be like keeps... She Hulk episode one. Like, it. can we not move past uh, Ahsoka D's nuts because that would. Was... <laughs> the, the phrase peak star wars has been like thrown around so much and it's like ugh. is peak star wars now just when it makes a reference to itself yeah you know like, what i mean yeah. is it peak star wars when hu yang like says a long time uh, ago uh, like, Jesus. Like, I, I don't i don't get it uh, i don't get it yeah, and long time Jay ago in a galaxy far far oh fuck off you stupid <laughs> like pe- peak star wars to me is when george lucas took inspiration from a lot of different things that he thought were cool or interesting and made something that was very unique. And then yeah. I know a lot of people didn't like the prequels, but the prequels absolutely were still a very creative thing that he did. He didn't just rely on the same ships, the same, all this stuff. He brought in all new ships, all new species, like continued to build out the universe. Mm-hmm. To me, that's peak star Wars, not copying something that you know is going to make people go, I, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, this was yeah. just you remember Star Wars. The jangling keys in this was insane. <laughs> remember a long just... time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Dude, uh, yeah. Love you, long time ago in a galaxy far, far and away. And we'll get to Something that. To say when you don't know what to say. It's like the well, they just they don't say anything. Uh, they, they just stare at each other for long periods of time. We'll get we'll get into it. Because because I'll start reviewing the thing. We'll start reviewing the thing right now. And sometimes we've done that, and then our introductions end about halfway through the show. So and can we just call this Sabine and not Ahsoka? Exactly. Can we just call it what it is, Sabine. Oh, uh, Chrissy Mayer, what's up? Wow, it's so great to be here. Um, yeah, Ahsoka is very interesting, visually exciting, but. That's about it. I wanted to get to you right when you were eating something. I thought that would be the opportunity. I don't know. You're always, you're always catching me when I, when I have nuts in my mouth. <laughs> oh, wow. Ooh. Frank, stop how, it. How, we're how streaming. 
yeah excited to be here um excited for the fall excited for pumpkins and yes and spooky pie. time and not wearing white yeah because we're not supposed to wear white although i never did. everything had stains <laughs> on it anyway yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I, right that's why i don't wear white <laughs> yeah insert joke here chrissy uh, <laughs> i won't say what kind R- yes. ryan, ryan's saying i wear white after labor day all the time at night with my pointy hat he's like you know? he's like i've made <laughs> yeah, white after labor day <laughs> But the women in the work to get that promotion outfits. so I can start to wear red. <laughs> no, you want to wear white like the women in Tampax adverts. And they're oh, just God. always walking around with white trousers and then they just like stick the legs in the air and go, look, no blood, no blood between my cooch. So I've got a sanitary towel and it's just like, there you go, there you go. Confidence. Oh. Freaking confidence as, in white. As how, what? how did we get here? How, that, as just took that, like Ryan just went like kind of double <laughs> lower Joel's like. No, I want to break this. They just like, shit. I should. He tried to leave before the show started. We wouldn't let him. By the way, so um, and and yeah. So Ryan takes it to a next level, talking about some KKK lore, and then all of a sudden that went over a lot of people's. It went over everybody's head, and then Az takes it to menstruating. What the fuck are you? What the hell? We're talking about Ahsoka. No, we're talking about women in white clothes. Okay. That was wait. That was KKK lore. I thought he had just got his twenty three and me back. Oh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> hi Joe. Sorry, that was funny. Right. It should be. Hi, 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 Zitter or whatever you're called. Twitter. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I think it's X. I, fuck that. I'm not gonna call it X. That's dumb. That's dumb. Uh, comics. What's up? <laughs> Too much, dude. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing good, Hannah. How about yourself? Did you read 1984 lately? Uh, yeah, uh, and, and then I moved on to Brave New World, which I also highly recommend. What about that. Atlas Shrugged? Uh, no, I have not read that yet. Hey, I haven't read Atlas Shrugged yet. No, All right, Ryan. Okay, there you go. Thanks for being here. Uh, and you, then sir. we have, of course, wait. What people? Accident ago. Uh, hello, hello. I've seen a new picture of me circulating the internet. I found it. I think I'm going to have to make a shirt out of it because uh, it only makes sense. I will not love you long time. Yeah. Oh. Good picture. <laughs> well, where's the but, picture? Uh, Are we going to share that? Hey, Could fuck? we share? It's like an okay. audio description for the deaf people. <laughs> sure. Or, sorry, for the blind people. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, before I moved to Canada. <laughs> all them Americans so trying to say this lying to me all the time before I watched the movie. Uh, you Shout need to you, you need to get that hat. <laughs> you, you need do. that yeah. hat so bad. <laughs> Yeah, you do. Like Just wait a rice picking minute here. You're a oh lampshade. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, for now, I'll just wear this one. Thank you, Frank Gore. Oh wow. my God. You oh, yeah. The whatever, the, the, the whatever girl. Yeah. But she, you actually talk more than she does, right? So, I mean, I don't watch the podcast. That's so funny. Mm-hmm. That works. That actually works. Way to stay on brand, X ray girl. <laughs> You're welcome. Way to go. Thank you for being here. And uh, for the first time on Friday Night Tights, our very special guest from the Babylon Bee, Joel Barry. Hey, oh, th- welcome. There we go. Hey, 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 hey. Hi, guys. Any relation to Hallie? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, not, not blood related. Do you want to tell the fine folks what you do at the <laughs> Babylon Bee? Yeah, so I'm I'm the managing editor of the Babylon Bee. I, I write some of the jokes, I do some of the photoshops, and I, I manage a team of writers. And uh, yeah, it's it's been a good week. I uh, it's it's been a busy week actually. I'm kind of tired. We I was out in L.A. the heart of uh, the heart of progressive darkness all week, uh, promoting this this book that we released on Tuesday, the Babylon Bee Guide to Gender. So it's been uh, it's been nothing but. Um, like radio interviews and cable news interviews and all this stuff. But I, I wanted to say that of all the things that I've ever been on, I've never been more excited to be on anything than this show right here because I love all of you guys. Aww. You guys, are like, you, you don't know me from Adam, but you all seem like old friends to me because I've, I've enjoyed you for years. And this is starting oh. to sound a little gay, so I'm going to stop. But um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've enjoyed you for years. No, that didn't sound one, remotely man. gay, Joe. That's no. all. But, but I do have a bone to pick with you guys because Uh-oh. 
X-Ray Girl emailed me when when she booked me on this show and she, she said, I need you to watch the entirety of freaking Ahsoka <laughs> before you come on the show. And I suffered through the entire thing. And I watched the whole thing in two nights and I was like Whoa. slapping myself to keep myself awake through this like monstrosity of a show. So um, I, I have thoughts. I'm outraged. I'm one of those fascists who enjoys good entertainment. Yeah. Um, that's so, and, and personally, I think you should be right slapping now. yourself for watching this crappy entertainment because that's what we all do <laughs> every time when we watch it. I, Disney is one of the most powerful, wealthy corporations in the world. They they theoretically have infinite resources to create mm. great, and this is the best they can crap out. It's insane. There's no excuse. I don't understand. I don't understand. Well, I have my theories, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> Oh no! That is, <laughs> no! Uh, oh god! I can't even I, tell if this is satire I, or not anymore. That, that, that's actually a threat we should take seriously. Yes. Oh my god! Well, I, I think the the joke is what you wait five minutes and whatever article the Babylon Bee writes, it becomes true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's right. That's right. Oh so wait! God forbid. Wait till next when election season starts, you'll be prophetic again, and uh, it, it'll be hard for you to be a parody. It, it must be difficult right now because we're living in such a parody world. Yeah, we are. Yeah, our our favorite satirist G.K. Chesterton said that uh, satire has diminished in this epoch because uh, reality has become too absurd to be satirized. And he wrote that a hundred years ago. So here we are now. Here we yeah. are. Now. But we did once we tried to uh, we tried to write an article where we prophesied only good things because we wanted good things to come true, and and it didn't work. It didn't so work. We tried. We tried. Thanks for trying. You know, that's that's all we can expect. Bethesda Thanks. made a good space game. <laughs> <laughs> With no pronouns. <laughs> You're boring! It's my favorite part. Well, I do stand very much by that boring, because it was very boring. That was an, that was an epic rant. I loved it so mm. much. I stood behind you all the way. You know, see, you're, you're still doing the gay thing, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I've been enjoying you for years. Stood behind you. What are you, <laughs> Joe? I mean, you losers, loser. <laughs> Thank you. There That's we go. Right. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but I mean, the, again, with that rant, it's like we. If you go back, well, Dan Vass can do this now since he needs to make content for Twitter. He can go back. There's there's thirty as rants in the last year that are just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Easily, someone needs to Just compile. Do a rant channel. Yeah, uh, it's called RK <laughs> Outpost. Oh my god! Yeah. As <laughs> I think so. I think we got that one covered. As we you do. Should start an only rant. <laughs> only rants. Only rants. Yes. Mm. There you go. Well, I do get people coming in saying, "Hey, do a rant about this thing I want you to rant about." It's not. It's not how it works. <laughs> I, I will every once in a while get super chat says, "Hey, Ryan, make fun of me or something." So. Oh, I'll do, I do that for cameo for money, though. Cameo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I get paid to take the piss out people. <laughs> I do it for free. As is a grifter, I will do it for free. Now, remember what the Joker <laughs> said in the Dark Knight: If you're good at something, something never, never do it for free. Never do yep. it for free. That's right. That's that's monetize that shit. Hey, uh, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh it's gone. Sorry. Well, dude. I was gonna say I wanted to share something real yes, quick. Yes, I was because, just gonna lead um, into that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Gina Carano's at Fan Expo in Salt Lake City, which wow. I don't know what there other than a Salt Lake and 3% alcohol beer. But <laughs> Fan Expo, Mormons. Fan there's Expo of, in Salt Lake Mormons. City is going on. And look at, there's a lot of FNT fans there apparently. Drunk 3PO's with her and sent me this because Gina's getting ready to Aww. sign this apparently. Wow. Look at this at Fan X. Look what I see representing FNT. Oh my God. Look at all these famous YouTubers oh, here. God. I know some of them. I know some. Look, I even got to sign it. I was trying to <laughs> sign over Gary's face, but, uh, you know, not allowed. Gina's going to sign this, too. Pretty awesome, man. Hail the fellowship, Oh, he's got Gary's right? shirt on. Everything is, nice. This is awesome. Yeah, so we got we got Gina yeah. signing FNT merch. That's, that's, that's uh, awesome. Wow. Man. That's that is cool. surreal. That is mm. surreal. I got to hear Drunk 3PO. I know. Well, I mean, That's shout, I shout out to Drunk 3PO, the most famous YouTuber under 100,000 subs in the history of time. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, <laughs> he only got 1,000 of those subs himself. 
<laughs> hey. No, but thanks to Jay for sending that. Yeah, thanks to Jay. Cool. Uh, candy corn, team candy corn. That's right. Yeah, Jay. that's the. Oh, yeah. that's the, yeah. It's candy corn. Can we talk season. about. Uh, let's just get this out of the way too. Let's, like, let, oh, God. yeah. Let's let's get this out of the way. By the way, Gina, uh, Gina, we love Gina Carano, but she's a treacherous harlot for stabbing me and Jay in the back about candy corn. So I just. Oh no. Represent. Oh. Yeah. No, Let's, Team anti -candy corn. Let's share this. It's not even October yet, and we already had to like get into this bullshit. Uh, yeah. October <laughs> is candy corn month. Let's all get ready to celebrate Gina Carano's favorite candy. Um, Gina just absolutely destroyed him with a ratio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Way to go, Gina. Yeah, Realizing that's basically wax. Gary joined in. He's Team Candy Corn. <laughs> yep, that's like, right. This is... This is the fucking reality. I had to I had to weigh in. I don't tweet often, but only old people and freaks like candy corn. <laughs> wow. right. You can try to convince people to eat that wax. I'm sitting here with nothing but peak Halloween candy already stocked. I this is on my already right have yours in the too. bowl. Wow. I do. Yeah. Oh, I'm re I'm I'm ready. That shit. You need to gone. you need to send me some candy corn so I can um I'll I'll send cast you. my vote. Uh we're sending you yeah. your package soon as you can't okay. tell me that, like, 20, 2036 is it, 2034. All this stuff out there. If you have <gasps> Reese's, Mr. Twix, M&M's, Snickers, Ooh. Starburst, Three oh. Musketeers. What flavor like, Twix is that? It's it's so it's green because it's uh, like Halloween, but it's Ooh. it's just normal flavored Twix. Yeah, okay. that's, cool. those, that's all solid stuff. I'm, I wouldn't disparage any of that. That's good. All I like me some Snickers, corn. some Twix, some M&M, no, Starburst. Yes, but, but, but if you want to fling out the Starburst. plastic. Okay, Starburst oh, okay. are plastic, yeah. too. They are plastic. <laughs> it's right. No, but they plastic. taste good. They're good. So so we used so to call them opal corn. fruit. <laughs> we called them opal fruits over here in the UK. Uncle fruit? What the opal fuck is fruit. wrong opal. with you people? Oh opal God. fruits. Holy. What's I don't why? care if your uncle is a fruit. It's his life. Leave him be. Joel, it's probably directed at you by now, but I. <laughs> <laughs> opal fruits. Opal. Opal. Uncle. O P A A. Opal. Opal. Like how? As in, as in the fucking style. gem. Opal. The gem. Opal. The gem. Opal. Yeah. Okay. 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 I don't. Gotcha. Opal fruits. Opal fruits. Can, can I just say, chat? Made has... to make your mouth water. What is what is chat? That doesn't like candy corn. Sixty-two oh percent. No. That's right. Base chat. People. See, Based. I like candy corn, but I'm I'm a yeah. former Marine, so I also like the taste of crayons. That's <laughs> Are you guys eating crayons? All the time. It's our favorite. The red Purple ones are the crayon. best. Oh no. Yeah. What flavor? What, fra like, what flavor crayon like do you like? Fruit. Red. 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 <laughs> red. You know. So so what? So we eat some Play-Doh, we eat some crayons, we eat fucking candy yeah. corn. It's a tradition. Yeah. We call I'm right about candy Snickers corn. marathons, by the way, as well. We call Ryan. Snickers you think you're right about everything, and I appreciate I do, about but, you. But well, you're this not. is what I'm going to say. I'm right about candy corn. However, I have a very like incredibly wrong opinion on Starburst because I think I have the inverse order of my favorite Starburst. Oh, uh, don't say you like the yellow. Fuck off. I, I, my Wait, let me guess. Top to bottom, top no, to bottom it's is strawberry. yellow. It's strawberry. Yellow, then orange, 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 strawberry. Red, then it's pink. strawberry. No. What it's what the hell did you like? Then it's wait, red. wait, Ryan, I didn't catch that. So you I'll like it? I think I'm I'm in the minority. I'm wrong about this, but this is my favorite. Yellow, no, and orange, then red, then pink. No. And almost no. Oh, God, no. no. Something wrong with you. I, it's, I know. It's, it's red, I then it's orange, so. then it's green, then it's yellow. Do it. Where is the pink? I've been told I need to admit when I'm wrong or acknowledge I can be wrong. So there it is. <laughs> I my opinion on that, based on every other person, is wrong. The pink comes after the orange, probably. I think yellow and orange are kind of the same. No! Mm -mm. <laughs> Yellow's the, the same. It has to be the worst. It has to be the worst. No, orange no, is the, the, the yellow are too, the too tart. Okay, okay. I'm just worried that people are going to clip this out of context to make it sound like we're talking about races. So I'm just. Oh, I, I mean. <laughs> yeah, hey, I put yellow. yellow at the top, so I should be <laughs> no, good, right? No, my dad told me. Now I, I agree with hard. yellow at the top. I'm allowed to try the black starburst. My dad would have let me. I've done a 180. <laughs> a complete 180 on everything now. <laughs> we could be talking about the lightsabers in Ahsoka because they're so meaningful. Red! There's an orange red! one. There's a red it's one. A red one. It's a red one. 
Uh, I guess we can talk about Ahsoka. I don't know why. I think it's almost over. So we're six episodes in. As uh, try uh, gave gave us a little experiment to do on Real BBC. Asked us to write down the plot oh, yeah. of the show, right? And as wrote down a pretty pretty uh, accurate plot. Uh, some people are looking for Thrawn. I said um, some dumb women were looking for balls. Uh, his is a little more accurate. <laughs> but um, and what did you get this episode, Gary? Thrawn. We, we got balls. more more women balls. with balls <laughs> and long pauses. That first fifteen minutes, oh, gosh. my god, of this episode, <sighs> there is. Tell me a story. Don't tell me a story. Do you want to hear a story? No. Yes. It's fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand this. I, 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 like, <laughs> there's no point to it other than that it's just comics is a nod. Yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey. Do, do you know who's hey. under that mask? Uh, Wes Chatham. So uh, he was Amos in The Expanse. Oh, and, and they oh, yeah. okay. like why would you get an actor like that to just wear a fucking stormtrooper costume? Yeah, that's kind of dumb, kind of stupid. He was so yeah. good, Daniel as Amos. Craig. Yeah. He's great yeah. as Amos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. But the crazy thing in Force Awakens, I knew that was Daniel Craig immediately yeah. because the way he fucking walked out of that. Room. Yes, like he walked exactly <sighs> like Bond. Yeah. Like when, when he walked out of the room and tossed his gun, I'm like, that's fucking James Bond walking. <laughs> yeah. He's got a he's got a distinct walk. Have you ever seen Layer Cake, Ryan? Layer cake. Layer cake. So. It's, That's uh, a great it's, movie. Uh, Matthew Vaughn, Daniel yeah, Craig movie. It's the reason he got the Bond gig. Is fucking awesome. Yep. Watch, watch oh, yeah. Layer Cake. Yeah, he, he just kind of walks like that, doesn't he? So, um, yeah, the first fifteen minutes, we're we're leading up to you know because we're these are people searching for Thrawn, <laughs> as is not wrong, and about halfway through the episode, we finally get Thrawn, but it's after like this brutal long period of just like fucking nothing. They're inside the stomach of a fucking star whale and uh, we just had this big key jangling uh that actually looks like a better thrawn than the one we got to be honest <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah it leads to nothing for, so there's two like reunions we got thrawn with and sabine uh and then we have sabine and ezra and they're both like nothing uh. like there's the the sabine ezra reunion was a fucking joke like uh, that was really rough compare it to yeah. compare it to i don't know um john snow and sansa you know when they see each other for the first time in uh in, in uh, season five of game of thrones after being apart for the entire season since season one like the, the two a, stark siblings that were the least connected by the way by the way yes. had the best reunion absolutely best reunion uh and then it's just like hey how's your how's your weekend it was like it's so <laughs> awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Have, you been, have you got any fucking blow on you? By any <laughs> <laughs> and that, you know, I, that face blow. And we haven't addressed like she obviously didn't want to talk about everything, but we'll see what the fallout is when she's forced to tell Ezra that. By the way, you know everything you you sacrificed ten years of your life coming out here I just undid. to protect the galaxy from Thrawn. <laughs> I very selfishly allowed him the means to escape. Right. Yeah. We'll see what happens when that comes, because that moment obviously has to come. With, He'll forgive her immediately. Properly. Yeah, he will forgive her immediately. It's Straight not going to be a big deal. I forgive yeah. you. Good, because I wasn't asking well, to forgive was, the, uh, Sabine fought off uh, whatever the fake Sam Eight. people were. Like, how, oh. many pe how many people did she fight off by herself? It was like, like five or six. Five yeah. or six yeah. by her yeah. fucking self. Uh, ma male characters that were clearly she's not super powered. By the way, she's Mandalorian, but she's she's got Beskar arm. But she's, she's not got fucking, Beskar, which she is kind of hit the back of the head. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Like, she's just not wearing a helmet, though. No, yeah, no, she got she no, got hit in the back of the head with a bladed weapon, and nothing happens to her. And then the three guys decided to stop shooting at her and just go at her with a bunch of sticks. That's right. As soon as she pulled out the lightsaber, as soon as she pulled out the lightsaber, everyone forgets that they have guns, and then they just. So it was yeah, so so freaking forces female, right? Because you couldn't have Ezra. Somebody pointed this out. It wasn't me. But you, you could have had Ezra save her. No, no, wait. We can't have Ezra save her because that's a yeah. man saving a woman. So that yeah. won't happen. Mm. Uh, so she has to save herself, even though the dog threw her off, which was probably the funniest scene in there, by the way. I thought that was funny. But um, everything else, like 
this this show is nothing, and I, I, I'm going to keep comparing it to One Piece. Think of the seventh episode, the girl with the swordfish tattoo. You get oh, yeah. so much plot in that entire fucking episode. You find out that what, what Nami was doing, and by the end, they resolve it in, a, in an episode, in a single episode that feels that feels like it's got depth, it's got character arcs, and this one, uh, we haven't gotten a tenth of what's in that one episode throughout this entire mm. series. It's just Not even close. drawing shit out. I, I gotta ask Joel, since he watched this entire thing, all six episodes kind of binged it, did you feel that there was, <laughs> do you have any idea what Thrawn was supposed to be or what the buildup was? And did you feel satisfied with this reveal Ooh. of Thrawn? Oh my gosh. No, it was so like, okay. So for, for, first of all, the whole, the whole thing, watching it back to back to back, binging it is, is excruciating because the whole thing <laughs> is slow. I, I know we've been over that, but it's almost like. I feel like everyone involved in this show, including the actors, the writers, the photographers, like the cinematographers, they're all people. That I, I think this is my theory. OK, now I, I want to be respectful and empathetic to people with mental health issues and stuff like that, because I know that don't be. We're not. But We're right <laughs> here. Yeah, I, I feel like every single person involved in this show is like on a heavy sedative like uh like they're all on ssris and maybe some Ketamine. alcohol with some hormonal mm -hmm. birth control like thrown in there mm -hmm. and like they none of them like know how human beings act like the 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 reunion between sabine and ezra she risked the safety of the entire galaxy to save this guy and it's just awkward there's no emotion there it's just like flat aff affect like nothing i think so, i think the other thing at play here is that like they're so desperate to make it a platonic relationship because you oh can't yeah have empowered female uh, yeah if if she's in love or if she has a crush on this guy yeah. that wouldn't be empowering so it's just got to be platonic and they got to make it so ezra's totally cool with being in the friend zone so they just like have this awkward hug it was so bad i oh i hated it it's Did they, not, they didn't hook up they haven't no, hooked up no ever. so here's the relationship between them through all of rebels ezra i clearly like sabine and yeah. she's constantly just saying not not interested, basically. But they do get closer and closer, and it feels like they could be coming to that moment at some point. And then Ezra drops everything, sacrifices himself, you know, what we think, going to another galaxy. Mm -hmm. And Sabine's kind of left with that for the last decade and is obviously thinking about him. So they could be setting that up at some point, but they did not have that relationship before Ezra left. He had the interest, she pushed away, and she probably feels guilty for a lot of that now. I swear to God, I thought I was going to see those little shell boys, like those little creatures that hang out in the shells. I thought they were going to start singing like, you know, you know, you want to kiss the girl. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like they, they act like an awkward couple who hooked up a while ago and they're pretending they didn't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my, a couple big problems with this episode are it, it takes Sabine an hour like she goes to a new galaxy on a new planet i know the thing she had to lead her to ezra or the last known location which they make it clear they move all the time gets destroyed immediately she happens to run in to this little weird turtle crab fucking freak who happens to live with ezra like yeah, it's, it's, it's the dumbest most cartoon bullshit mm. possible that there's no, like, nothing that you have to go through to find Ezra. It's literally just complete happenstance on an entire planet. It's insane that that's how easy it was. Ten yeah, 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 yeah. If Ron I, could I, have found him in 10 years to go and kill him, that's the thing I find so stupid that they need not, her not, to find Ezra to kill that. him. It's not that, because he said, A, he could have easily gone and found Ezra. Mm -hmm. B, he has Sabine in his com in his prisoner. He then sets her free to reunite with Ezra to set the people onto him to fight them, even though now they're going to be stronger together. And then he turns around and says, well, it doesn't even matter if they're dead or not, just as long as they're stranded. So why are you even doing it in the first fucking place? Yeah. And I said and at the beginning of my review, I said, this, this, I said, this, we've had six episodes or five episodes of trying to find Thrawn. They found him. Then they looked for someone else. Yeah. And they found him. <laughs> that was it. It was like fucking stupid. And then as to follow on to what you just said about 
the plan to let her find Ezra and Yuri and then send these other people after. And well, it doesn't matter. They'll be stranded. It, it completely negates what he says later in the episode where he talks about Ahsoka Tano. And he's like, uh, never underestimate a Jedi. We can't assume yeah. she's dead until we see it. And it's like, you literally are doing that. You're doing that right now. <laughs> and with yeah. the person who's already defeated you. Now, I maybe, <sighs> they haven't shown this, maybe they will do a little bit of explanation as to why Ezra and Thrawn, like why he didn't go after him. Maybe, like to me, it would have made a lot more sense if you laid the groundwork for when they jumped together, even though they were enemies, they ended up being forced to rely on each other in a new galaxy just to survive. That story, I think there's a lot you can do with that and a lot of nuance and things that could be cool. Why they had to work together and maybe they split up because something happened. Enemy mine. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. but great movie for right now, they haven't done that. So unless you explain why, it is retarded for you not to just take a couple TIE fighters and do a strafing run on this crab village and kill Ezra. Like, mm. like this is the person <laughs> who did this to you. Thrawn wouldn't do something strictly out of revenge just because he was mad. But if it, it's a loose thread, and it's clearly someone who can be a threat to any plans mm -hmm. you have, that's already been demonstrated. So for him to underestimate him again is the most retarded Thing ever especially for a character that's supposed to be known by their intellectual superiority well not only that but he's supposed to be a brilliant tactician too and it doesn't make any yeah. sense for him to go and let her free or leave ezra alive for that matter so he it, has it, a it's... whole star destroyer yeah a star destroyer the size of fucking manhattan yeah that is the size of these fucking things and there is a guy who lives with crabs. <laughs> <laughs> fucking crabs. I mean, haven't yeah. we all at some point? Can we get some fucking perspective here? Can can we also talk about the fact that hyperspace maps are now completely obsolete? Because now a Jedi can just whisper to one of those like space sperm or whatever they were yep. and, and travel to anywhere she wants in the universe. It's it, it's like completely lore breaking. Yeah. No maps needed. So the lore the map is to, that the, map. They, you, the Purgle are the thing, the species that they use to get those hyperspace maps. Because Purgle were able to like enter hyperspace, that's how they moved and everything. That's how um, initially when people started intergalactic travel, that they realized what routes were safe and which ones weren't. So that's how they started mapping out the gap. That's the lore in Disney canon. Um, so... It is. It, you wouldn't uh, know that, okay. you know, if you hadn't watched yeah. the children's that's, TV series. But that's the know. thing, I, Joel. I'm going to go out on a limb. It didn't watch all of Rebels. You didn't watch all of Clone Wars. Did you watch watch them all the no. way through? No. No. I started. I started them. I didn't finish them. Yeah. Uh, they, they they give no reference to this, so it must have been like very hard to care about any of these characters at all watching this cold. I, I yes, but imagine. with good writing, you sh should be able to do that. Yes. I right. Mean, writers can yeah. make you attached to a character and care about somebody within a few lines if you do it right. That's why I keep saying there's no excuse. I mean, Disney should be able to have access to good writers. Who is writing this? I, well, I, I care about Balon. I, I care about Balon's character. I like. He, yeah, he had some terrible lines in this episode, though, sadly. So th this one, it's... Okay, we got we get it. There's mystery around him. You need to start establishing what it is. You know what I mean? We've been interested, we've been intrigued by what he's continuing to say, but with the very ambiguous references, it's like, hey, we we've had the teaser. We need you to tell us something substantive. Now. Well, especially when you're at episode six of an eight episode series. But uh, as as uh, pointed out on Twitter the other day, <laughs> this episode was just th filler, by the way. So. Um... <laughs> Uh, hey, bro, I'm on a new diet. Can you tell? Is your goal to eat half of Coruscant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think people like... I think you had all the cor Coruscants uh, in the day. All the croissants. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so Ray Stevenson has a great presence. He's a great actor, uh, a great character actor. Unfortunately, he's not around. I think people like the idea of him, but his character is a is a big fucking nothing. He's he hasn't told us shit. He's a former Jedi, um, you know, survived Order uh, sixty six, one of many now, and uh, he wants. He's like some, Daenerys. He wants to break the wheel, Gary. He wants to break the wheel. Okay, how? Uh, be, there's another species on this planet that's not the Night Sisters. Who's that? Uh, that's probably going to be. I can't remember their name now. We talked about them last week. 
uh, I can't remember. There's the, the Nazi the species, uh, shell people. No, the 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 the, the race from another galaxy that was so uh, fuck humans. That's it. No, I don't fucking care anymore. Do we call them care. cyclists? Yeah. The the the, the, the Dafimiri? <laughs> Maybe. I can't remember that the name was now. Well, the uh, sisters. Are you are you yeah, talking about what people are yeah. guessing? Or yeah, what people in... are guessing? What people are guessing? Yeah. Well, so there's a lot of ways they could go in terms of Yuzong Vong and stuff yes, like that. That's like, the one. That's the Yuzong, one. Like, there's a lot of people that are speculating that. I don't know. We'll see. Yuzong Vong is from the expanded universe. Yep. It. I love the new Jedi Order storyline. Took place between. 1999 to 2003, 2004, a 19 book series about an intergalactic species that invades uh, this galaxy. You can't sense them in the force. They have complete biotech. They grow all their own shit. Really fucking cool and intriguing. And mm -hmm. it's where Star Wars in the books really grew up. You started to see a lot of people dying off, like Game of Thrones for Star Wars, kind of how it felt. Nobody was safe. Um, shit like that. They could definitely rip that off, but they already have something like that in Disney canon called the Gris um, that they could use or should use. Who knows what they're going to do? Personally, they have to do something that is substantial in this galaxy. Otherwise, there's no point in making it another, another galaxy instead of just unknown regions, uncharted space. Uh, you know, right? the, it, hey, things are going to jump off in the next series, whatever that <laughs> is. Things are really going to jump off. Okay. Uh, well, the, the thing that's ultimately pointless about their show is that all they're doing is just bringing Thrawn back, right? And that's so they could have their stupid movie. So this show really isn't relevant to the movie that which they're kind of building up to. Just like with everything else coming out of Disney, specifically with Marvel, all these shows are pointless. Nothing really happens. And then all it is is basically just content for a streaming platform. Mm. It's filler. I, I think the question people are asking now in terms of Thrawn is... Is he going to be the big bad of that movie or has Thrawn discovered there's a bigger threat and they might have some sort of team up in place with, you know, the heroes and the remnants of the Empire? That would be um, interesting. That would yeah, actually that be cool. if they did it well, sooner. Yeah, I, I thought we're getting the recycled Jedi order. The Empire. That's, eventually that's what happens. And that storyline I'm talking about with Yuzon mm -hmm. Vong is they get invaded. And even though the Imperial Remnant and New Republic are technically still like they've got an armistice or whatever, but they end up really joining forces for this bigger threat because they know it's going to destroy the galaxy. It gets turned into the Galactic Alliance, which is more of a whole galactical government shit like that. So, yeah. Well, what I don't know, Ryan. Fairly... I just I just want to see more space women solving puzzles very slowly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, that's, that's what, what I'm we, we all do. We all do. <laughs> <laughs> that's how their brains work failings. slower. So they have to. One of the biggest failings for me in this show is, uh, well, it's the antagonist. The Thrawn is, they're trying to build up and say Thrawn is this big bad guy. He's a, he's a wet fart when we introduce to him. And all he has is a Star Destroyer. And I'm thinking, why is he such a big threat to the galaxy? They haven't established anything in the show, and there might be something in the extent, what, Rebels, whatever, but they shouldn't have to rely on external source material for this story to make sense. And they have given no reason to explain why Thrawn is such a threat. I mean, he's an admiral. Okay, I'm sure there's other admirals that are left over from the um, Empire. Like, like, what? why is he any different to the Imperial Remnant that's already actually in the galaxy still? It's his red eyes. Being a menace. Yeah. I think it's because he kind of looks like Elon Musk, and that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> but his Star Destroyer is dilapidated. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a single it's, Star it's, Destroyer. Yeah, so he's got, we've got a single Star Destroyer, and this is the guy who's meant to rekindle the war this guy who looks like he's been fucking living in a Dunkin' Donuts for the last 10 years. Yeah. yeah. And he's just like, how, how, how are we meant to even take Thrawn seriously? The first thing he did is go, hi, Sabine. I remember the last time we met. You fucked me over. Yeah. Bye. Well, the, here's the thing some, is, here's the, some supplies. Here's your weapons. Here's your lightsaber. Here's a fucking map to, to the last location. He's, we we mm. didn't bomb him because he's with some fucking crabs. And they're fucking crazy, those little fuckers. So we're not doing anything. <laughs> go off and find him. You two, Jedi, you go after him. But I thought you were going to reunite him with Ezra. I am. Oh. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, is, isn't something meant to happen now? No. I mean, we just pretend that I'm not, but I actually am. Yeah. yeah. Right? And, and then and what? Uh, uh, and crabs? <laughs> What dog? <laughs> Face dog? I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's fucking going on. 
They're on well, his. And then he gets some twats on Twitter again. Well, clearly, you just don't understand what's going on. <laughs> Thrawn Clearly. is such a unique villain and there's a reason that ever since the Thrawn trilogy back in 91 mm. Heir to the Empire that people have been a big fan that he's had a big fan base and that they've decided to roll him out that they brought him back into canon they try to it's because he is such an interesting villain it's because he's so uh, he can see ahead right he mm. he really never gets beat because he makes a fucking mistake or something it's always a happenstance or something that you couldn't possibly foresee happening. Um, that's not easy to write as a character, especially when you're Dave fucking Filoni yeah. and you're doing cartoon level shit. But the base, the base that you can have, if you're going to debut Thrawn in live action, all these people that are watching that have no idea who the fuck this is, but mm -hmm. they've been told they really need to fear him or be intimidated by him. The appearance that he has when he walks in there it's laughable. He he looks like he's slouching. He looks a little bit overweight. His uniform looks completely rumpled and shit. Mm. And I see a lot of people arguing, well, you know, he should be in his late 60s or 70 in this timeline. Okay, let me show you from Rebels, right? This is who they established this character is. This would probably have been taking place, I don't know, 13 years before this happened. Maybe we're a little bit fuzzy on the timelines. But this is Thrawn, which he would have been in his mid to late 50s here. Yeah, well, he didn't. He didn't discover Dunkin' Donuts then. No, he, yeah. he's training. He this fucking is like very concerned. He's very fit. He's yeah. very fit. He's Pre very concerned about his martial prowess, and he's very concerned with how people view him and making sure that there's there's nothing that anyone can ever hold against him. That he is like the perfect fucking admiral because he's a non-human in an empire that's fairly xenophobic, right? So mm -hmm. people have been doubting him because he's not <laughs> human. Like that's part of his first story. order, mate. It's Ryan, very progressive think... nowadays. Yeah, well, I think I think that's the problem. This Disney can't, uh, they can't portray a, a powerful, uh, formidable man. Uh, all their male characters have to be slightly pathetic in some way, even if it's yes. a yes. gut or you know, like they just it's it's just like baked into Disney at this point. Balin's the only character that has exhibited any masculinity. The, the two minutes that we got with Ezra, he just looked stoned off his fucking tits, like he'd just come up from the Bay Area. And was desperate for another fucking fix of fentanyl or some shit. He just, he just came back from Burning Man. That's what yeah. he was. Well, yeah. The other thing too is they, they completely Spirit. undermine the I threat that Thrawn you. is in Rebels. And that's just going to translate over to the other series or movies that they do with them. Well, well whatever they do, what they're lacking, we've talked about this before, is male yeah. energy. There's no male. <laughs> it, yeah. Dave Filoni does not bring any male energy. Okay, that's yeah. a guy. I, I doubt, I doubt he's ever ran in his life. Uh, so like we're, we're talking about a story group of, uh, they, thems and Z Zems and all that, who've never pr probably left their bedroom, went straight to some liberal arts college and then straight into to Lucasfilm based on nothing but their skin color. And yeah, we're getting shitty stories. Yeah. We shouldn't be surprised at all. And, and it's, it, it's, they, they want to get extra marks on the Bechtel test. It is fucking oh, ridiculous. Very so, apparent. Yeah. Uh, Maybe so. Thrawn gained all that weight because he's constantly dealing with blue balls. <laughs> or he found a Krispy Kreme. He's got blue everywhere. He's either blue one. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Get your mind out that, of the gutter. I, I, he's going to buy the Empire and rename blue, it to yeah. X. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, he kind of does it. If it if, unless he's going to take over the Empire and call it the, that it's going to be Thrawn that changes it to the First Order. Oh, mm. Jesus Christ, no. Well, I, Please, they, they, God, there's, no. A, no. There's a big hint in this episode <laughs> when um, Thrawn is talking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thrawn is Space talking. Space Admiral to, Elon. He's talking to uh, Morgan. Uh, Morgan Freeman. And Morgan. He, he mentions that, uh, that, that the Jedi and the Night Sisters both fake death all the time. It's a common ruse. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they are so setting. They are setting up the the emperor. They have been setting up the emperor since the beginning of the Mandalorian. Uh, Ryan, you talked about this. Mm. The whole clone project with uh, little baby Yoda is all part of you know bringing back the emperor. So we're yep. we're going straight towards the Disney trilogy, like without a doubt. They're they're not changing course, which is insane. Th Think about it. I, I what I'm really hoping is that just. 
because <laughs> we've been saying this for a long time. I'm really hoping that Thrawn's return is setting up the First Order completely. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I hope that Th Thrawn returning, maybe he ends up dying off in this movie or whatever, and then the reins get turned over to General Hux's dad, who, who, who we saw in that episode of Mandalorian. And that's the First Order. Because they were when they were talking their holograms, they were talking about Operation... Uh, Necromancer. Something. Necromancer, yeah. Operation yeah. Necromancer, which is clearly Palpatine, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's all setting it up. I mean, it's super subtle. Our, our bringing back somebody from the dead they... secret program, we're going to call it Necromancer, so nobody will guess it. <laughs> right, so we're having a bunch of shows that are setting up a sequel trilogy which fucking destroyed Star Wars. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Do they understand yep. the fucking logic here? No, they don't. We they... are literally, we're going to show you how we fucked it in the ass. <laughs> all yeah. of it. Well, I, I describe Star Wars as basically oh. a rotting corpse uh, that has been reanimated and it's stumbling around yeah. looking for brains because it's not finding any at Lucasfilm. No, it's it's getting yep. regularly defiled. That's yep. that's yes. by it's... Dave Filoni and 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 crew. And Dave Filoni is like, sorry, I'm sorry to defile you. I'm really, really sorry for doing a dinner defiling on you. If you like my cowboy hat, you can wear it while I defy you. I can wear I it. Oh my God. Like, see, I identify as a middle-aged old woman. I, 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 I'm very, very, very non-masculine. I am very unthreatening. And I, I'll be very happy to write you a shitty story. And I get paid a lot of money. It, like, the, that's the thing I've noticed about new Disney Star Wars, too, is that we, we pick it out. We pick it apart a lot because of the plot holes and the continuity errors and all the issues with it there there are plot holes in the original trilogy i mean we, we all remember like you know some of the issues in uh empire strikes back and you know in return of the jedi there's luke's air kick you know but we love those stories because they were well-written meaningful stories and we're, we're willing right. to be a little more forgiving i think mm -hmm. with with stories that are well written um then we are, but but what they've done, I, who is the like the producer of uh, Rings of Power who said like it only it, it makes sense that these stories reflect the world that we live in today? Lindsay Weber. Lindsay, Lindsay Weber. Weber. She said, you know, these stories need to reflect the world that we live in today. That's what all no. these writers are doing no, now. They don't. They're judging their stories based off of their own criteria. Like they they want to make a realistic, real world story. So we're we're holding them to that standard, what? you know. Uh, I don't know. It's just no. It, I agree with that. No and, and the reason we cared about uh, the original trilogy, trilogy characters is because they were good characters, and it was a mm -hmm. character-driven yeah. piece. So yeah. we can look past the fact that Luke made out with his sister. Okay, uh, we can you know just she slide came on to him in all fairness. She did. She yeah. came okay. through. I mean, yeah. Yeah. and it was so, it was so a modern myth. It, you know, what? it was a classic hero's journey modern myth, and and it's com been completely thrown out the window. As I just want to, so if your sister hits on you first and you don't know it, it's it's okay. No. Okay. I just. <laughs> we, we but you break down that further, but the problem is you don't know because you yeah. don't know that's your sister. Exactly. And she yeah. and she didn't know it was his brother. So when I, people go, "All oh, right, God, there's incest," they didn't know. They didn't I know. Don't... But all right, let's break this down further. Leia was also being really toxic because she was just kissing Luke to make Han jealous. She yep. never was interested in yes. Luke in the first place. No. That is, that is categorical thought behavior right there. But with Disney like, Star Wars, they would know that they're brother and sister and they would be into each other and they would be yep. making out together. And they, uh, yeah. It's really and more like stepsister behavior, if you ask me. <laughs> I've seen the films. <laughs> yeah, the short yeah. films, the short foreign films or sometimes domestic. Yeah. <laughs> Independent. Short yes. pieces yes. on a hub. Yeah. On a hub. Uh, yeah. Um, I, 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 I love just, how I don't this, know, I'm just I, this, I love how this episode did bring a lot of people back to earth uh, on this show. You know, after the frenzy that they, they showed it in theaters, they showed the Anakin return <laughs> in freaking theaters. I don't know where. So uh, dumb. Ten, 10 different cities. Orlando was one of them. Oh, um, well, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Orlando, just 10 cities. 10 showings. It's not like they, they were packing, you know, out the thing all night or whatever. But yeah, the ones I heard, obviously it's fans that are going to it. Uh, the people that went to them that I saw said the crowds were pretty, I would have hated being there because they were just like constantly laughing and screaming and shit. You know? oh. I, I went uh, to the Rings but, of Power premiere in a theater in Waco and it was full. It was yeah. full, very quiet. Surprised it didn't burn down the theater. I know I've got it. 
I can't believe I drove to Waco for that shit. That was ours. <laughs> no, you did that to yourself, buddy. <laughs> I did, I did you, did did you look to your right and David Koresh's dead fucking body was just looking at you? The ghost of David Koresh <laughs> was like, this sucks. Gary. <laughs> Welcome to hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, so yes, I am. I uh, thank God there's only two episodes left. I can't imagine anything Ugh. happening till the last episode and it's just going to lead into something else. Yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking, I wonder how much of a bitch Balin's going to die. Like, <sighs> you know I don't, gonna like, happen. I, I don't, I, I don't think he's going to die in this. So they're going to recast him? They're giving him well, an Because the, the is is sh Shim showing die, signs of turning. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be some sort of what, like, whoever it is, somebody's going to have a little bit of a change of heart and somebody's going to be like, there's going to be conflict between Shim. them, certainly. Yeah. But I don't be, think, or... I, I don't think Balon's going to die or something this series. So what happened to Ray Stevenson obviously is tragic and it sucks, but like, it does complicate what they want to do with that character, obviously. And I don't think we should assume just because he passed away a few months before this show comes out that he's going to die in the thing. Hey, Ryan, I, I think remember we when we saw the Inquisitor was somebody? Remember huh? when we saw the Inquisitor was going to be somebody? And it in turned Rebels? out to be... Yeah, no, no. The Inquisitor in Ahsoka. Oh, Maroc. It yeah. turned out to be Fart Gas. Yeah. And yeah. it turned out to be Fart Gas. I, welcome, I welcome that. to... Welcome that, that to... Was, that was... Uh, I mean, that was them teasing something and fans, you know, coming up with everything. I am happy that they that Ezra got revealed in this series so that we didn't have to sit through a week of Ezra is Enoch. Um, because I think that's what would have happened. <laughs> if I mean, just realistically, it's what would have happened with these shows coming out weekly like this. It lends itself to that. Um, but I don't I don't think Balin's going to die. I think he's going to go out like an absolute bitch and essentially shim's gonna kill him yep i think you're right she's gonna saber him through the back as he's given a given a a speech to a soca or to sabine and he's gonna kill one of them and then he's just gonna go and shim's gonna be behind going horse is female yeah <laughs> This gut shot's going to take you out. So I feel like Sabine goes through so much, and she's being kidnapped, yet her eye makeup remains perfect. <laughs> yes. yes. Brilliant, yes. isn't it? You, you oh, never yeah. see her reapply. And then it's the infused with best star. Even you never on. see her apply it. No. It's, it's, it's just always that's on. That's because her eyes are just black like a soul. <laughs> It's it's infused I, I with gotta, Beskar, which is why she can have her helmet off and not be worried. It just bounces I, off. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta take issue with people who say that this show looks good too. I I disagree. Like it it's colorful, but it's got that weird Disney quality to it, where it's everything is just too clean and like mm -hmm. Balin's hair is too quaffed and like mm -hmm. everyone's clothes are clean and the the sets are like look like they were built just yesterday and they're in front of an LED screen. It just does not. Everything looks fade. It's all like Disney fied. I I. It doesn't feel lived filth. in, or yeah, yeah. You need more filth, more more dirtiness, more. No, you know, Ron Star Destroy was pretty filthy. <laughs> <laughs> it was on, but every time somebody walks outside, it just looks like volume, especially yeah. when they were in like the third version of Stonehenge. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and and you notice we, we haven't even brought up Ahsoka. She was barely in the oh, beginning right. of this episode. And show. Rosario Dawson is just such a wet blanket with she's nothing, man. She's there's. Nothing and there with the performance. People that were like, well, now she's Ahsoka the White. She's gonna be. Ugh. She's gonna be more like herself. It's like immediately turned off. Her she's gonna start paying her Ahsoka. taxes. She's going to. Ahsoka the boring. Hey, but this just shows <laughs> how, how little the show needs her. It, you know, you could take out pretty much every character, and the show wouldn't be affected. You could take out Sabine; it wouldn't affect the show. Ahsoka; it doesn't affect the show. You took out Balin, you'd be like, ah, there's actually something missing from this. You take out Thrawn, nobody would fucking care. You take yeah. out the Night Sisters, nobody would care. You take out Morgan, nobody would fucking care. Shim, nobody would fucking care. There is nobody in this show to give a fucking shit about. Nobody. Balin is the only character that resembles anything of a character. But I don't know why I like Ahsoka in this. Why do I like Ahsoka? Because you're telling me to like Ahsoka. There is no deed that has been done in this show from Ahsoka, Sabine, or any other Morgan, or anyone else that makes me give a shit about any of them. 
I am literally just watching people walking and talking and doing fucking nothing of consequence. And I don't care if any of them die. And I don't care if any of them live. And I don't care who's got a shiny glow stick and who's got a fucking hand cannon. I don't care. Nobody here is worth caring about. There isn't a story that has been crafted here that makes anyone give a shit about anything that's going on because it is, for want of a better phrase, now that I've been fucking tagged with this, current fucking day. Yep. And in oh, current I, yeah. day, we're not allowed characters anymore because men aren't allowed to be men and women aren't allowed to be women. And we're not allowed masculinity and we're not allowed femininity. And we're not allowed fucking relationships where a woman feels vulnerable and a man feels wanted. We're not allowed any of this shit anymore. We've it's got middle-aged fucking women who are writing this dog shit that are hiring effeminate men who don't have a scrap of fucking masculinity about them trying to create fucking characters that nobody cares about. And we're doing a fucking pre prequel to a sequel that everyone fucking hated. <laughs> and they want fucking praise for this shit. I remember hearing it's misogyny. <laughs> I have a question about, about um, um, Dan Ron Ron uploading that now. Ron, the Ron Stormtroopers, they have like Dan red already did it. straps <laughs> going across them. Is that because like the witches helped sort of like Maybe them. so. Sure. So I, uh, I believe that all of the stormtroopers that have the red shit on them are like undead zombies, kind of like Maroc was. Yeah. Like Night hmm. Sister Magic. Um, that's why they're called Night Troopers. If you had the closed captioning mm -hmm. on, um, that's, that's what I idea. think. Um, again, there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot mm -hmm. that happened in ten years, obviously mm -hmm. that. A lot of people are expecting we'll get some sort of explanation for, but a lot of this so far has been kind of create your own adventure and let the fans explain whatever mm -hmm. they think could happen. Uh -huh. I don't but, think they're going to explain it. I don't think they're going to explain it at all. Well, I, I think they will explain that because I think it's going to be apparent when next episode, in all likelihood, like two two uh, you know divisions of troopers go out to take out these people and they end up in a fight. I think you're going to see. The green like mist. If, if it's those storms, they're just going to fall apart, like, kind of like Morak did. I think that's mm. probably what you're going to see. But again, what happened to everybody and how mm. did that happen and all this shit? Because he said, you know, great sisters, I once again need your mat, need your help and magic, mm. whatever. And so obviously magic. they've helped them a lot <laughs> before. I, what I will say to try to find some uh, okay shit to say about the series. There's there's been some shots and some cinematography that I think have been great, even in this the Chimera's appearance when it like comes up on that. Yeah, that was plateau. awesome. Um, you know, and the music that went along with that I think was mm -hmm. good. Seeing the dilapidated Chimera and understanding that they've been in a lot of shit, which you know makes you wonder why you're just flying around instead of maybe preserving shit. But anyway, um, and the the landing all the way up until the troops started chanting Thrawn and he started walking down. I thought it was like good presentation. Uh you know, from the looks and the feel of it. But then but. It, it would have looked it would have looked good if they were doing this thrawn and you're sort of like, what's this sort of cult mentality? And then this buff fucking guy yeah. comes down yeah. looking dominating and 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 look making you maybe even Balin sort of a little un, uh, unease. Uneasy, but you've got yeah. this you've got this dude coming through that looked like he'd been spending Saturday every Saturday his local fucking food court. Hi, hi yes. everybody. I'm, didn't, uh, didn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like stand up straight, chest yeah. out, like uniform pressed and crisp. Pristine. pristine. Like that's, yeah. That, that's all it would, because I don't think that Lars is, I, I've seen Lars Mickelson. I haven't seen him look fat. So maybe it's a combination no. of the uniform and his posture and things like this, but he looks frumpy. He looks overweight and his uniform looks like shit. Yeah. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but like holes it's very in it. Simple when I, you know, things. And this, this might be what happens when you decide to, hey, we have to have the guy who voice acted Thrawn be the live action guy, even if it might not be the presence that you need when it's more than just a voice. Right now, we haven't seen that presence from Lars Mikkelsen. No, not um, at all. I think his voice is fine. It's what they used in Rebels, obviously, mm. but it's, it's he's not an intimidating presence and he needs to be. No, I mean, from a voice acting things. standpoint, he was um, fine, but you know, I agree with you 100% on that, Ryan. Go ahead, Jed. Well, they could have done some simple things, like, like simple, you know, understated shoulder pads, make him stand up a bit, you know, again, mm -hmm. shoulders back and all, all that thing. Because if you actually see that shot where Thrawn is standing right opposed to Balin, right, have a look at their guts. 
Balin has actually about as much as a gut as Thrawn, except there's a difference in posture. He's mm -hmm. wearing pauldrons, which makes him look far broader in the chest. And it's it's very simple things that you can actually present in a more intimidating masculine kind of stance. But they like all the all the flaws that you just pointed out, he's he's you know, you know, um could it could have had him in a corset. And, could have yeah, had him yeah, in a corset. Well, that's yeah, another thing. Could too. Have sucked it in a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is that his Wave face, center. you know, is not very <sighs> what's the best way to put it? Intimidating. I, I feel like uh, it, the way he actually looked, he didn't have the presence that Ron should have. No. Thrawn part has of an is, angular face, right? Yes. His, his, and he his, did not have his, an angular face. His brother would have been a better Thrawn. So. Yeah. Yes. Well, Mass mm. would have, yeah, Mass would have been a better, better So the fan Thrawn. casting for over a decade was Benedict Cumberbatch. Yep. Um, obviously, yeah. a lot of that probably has to do with yeah. Sherlock and, you know, the idea that Thrawn is kind of a Sherlock Holmes type character is able to deduce things that Good aren't figure. necessarily obvious. Right. Yeah. Um, but. I I always thought that would be a great casting for him, but I think Benedict Cumberbatch at one point is like, yeah, I don't feel like painting myself blue. No, <laughs> so they may have approached <laughs> him at one point in time. I don't know. <laughs> and working he probably for just Lucas doesn't Long. want it. Yeah. yeah, like being in Star Wars now is not the prestige it used to be. He ain't no. got a Disney no. Plus. No. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did you guys? I don't know if you saw it on Twitter. I wish Maybe I could. I, I wish I could remember who put this up. But there's the picture of uh, you know, the Star Destroyer on that. Uh, it, it looked like a it looked like a dick going into a star destroyer. It was it was the yes! mating practice yes! of star destroyer. And, and then the, the the tweet said, "This is how star destroyers are made." <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I will say this: there's been more like fucking. I feel like gratuitous ass shots in this series than I was Which expecting mean, of uh, women. Yeah. Um. Like mm. like very clearly for Hera multiple times. Um, you know, they've done that, which I'm I'm a little surprised by you because know why? I, I think, think that wanna... Dave Filoni has only ever had sex with men and dogs. So it's like surprising <laughs> to me that he would do that. But there's a lot of it there. Disney wants to show that they are behind their women. Hey. Indeed. Indeed. They have their back. I would maybe, stand maybe, behind Hera. Maybe the Hera thing was uh for you McGregor's benefit. Yeah, I saw a really funny fucking reel that showed him looking from Obi Wan looking through the macro binoculars and then seeing her ass and like it was so funny. <laughs> that would have been a better show than it got. Uh, he said hello there to Mary Elizabeth Winston and said goodbye to hello his ex wife. Oh, oh. Yeah. Accurate, he though. was without sin, cast the first stone. Uh, j just like I said with uh, Lauren Boebert, let he who has not been felt up or felt someone up in a theater cast the first. Stone. Yeah, yep. exactly. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, they got kicked. What they get kicked out for? Being well, loud. She, they, they, they tried to make him boob groping. <laughs> they were almost fucking. So. No. Her, her she date was playing Tune in Tokyo. <laughs> She it looks was like playing he was about to pop those things stick. like a water. Yeah, she she was uh, playing with the stick shift too. Yeah, <laughs> she, was, she was driving stick and he I was disagree. tuning the radio. My I favorite part about that story is that that was a first date. Oh yeah, <laughs> good, good go, yeah. My, go girl. Yo, I, hey, if I'm heading to Colorado, I'm looking up Lauren Bowler. I was gonna right? say I've yeah. been I've been doing first dates all wrong. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. So uh, Ahsoka sucks. Uh, that's probably not going to change next week uh, for Tano we, Tuesday. Hashtag Tano Tuesday. We did, Tuesday. Get, the, Tano we did Tuesday. get those numbers that came out too, the streaming numbers. Oh, yeah. Could you could you whip those out? Excuse me while I whip this out. Um, I can. I, I put out a video this morning. There's a lot of math involved, which I know x Girl probably Thank you. fucking loves, but I don't know how many other people like it. Um, no, we could just have the, the general it. story. We're not going to break down the freaking physics of it it's, yeah absolutely so uh, let me pull up the top 10 because after those initial like samba tv numbers came out people were like that can't be true and disney came out with a a, a statement that it's got 14 million views globally <laughs> and what i said at the time was like i could actually believe that that might be true that they might get 14 million views globally but i just don't think it's very impressive and we don't know what their other star wars shows got so disney and it's at first two episodes, 829 million minutes watched, which in and of itself is not like a terrible fucking number, right? Nope. Book of Boba Fett had like 
uh, 389 million minutes in its debut. But there's a lot of things that you have to consider. And one is the length of the episodes and how many episodes are available. Yeah. Ahsoka had two episodes available, 96 mm. minutes total for six days because they debuted on a Tuesday. Nielsen ratings do Monday through Sunday. So for six days, when you look at these numbers and you assume this is how they do it, or the same way Disney calculated theirs, they take total watch time divided by the available runtime of all their episodes out there. This would be about 8.6 million people in the United States tuning into Ahsoka. Okay. Um, well, when you compare that to something like Book of Boba Fett, which only had four days in its initial run, they even break it down in this Hollywood Reporter episode. Book of Boba Fett opened to 389 million minutes of viewing time, but it had the largest number of viewers for that week with a 39-minute running time because it only did one episode and only had four days. 10 million people in four days tuned into Book of Boba Fett debut. Obi-Wan Kenobi continues to get bigger. Three days for Obi-Wan Kenobi, over 11 million people tuning in. 11.12 million for Obi-Wan Kenobi. And then Mando Season 3 in a five-day debut, uh, just over 11 million people. So it looks like those Samba TV numbers were pretty fucking spot pretty on in terms of the comparisons to everything else, right? When when we when people are trying to argue that bullshit, you can only compare Samba TV to Samba TV numbers. But like they said, significantly less than Obi-Wan, Mandalorian, and Book of Boba Fett. The only thing it was above was Andor. And that plays out with these Nielsen ratings totally and completely. Yep. And it also kind of makes sense. The 14 million number was a global number over a week. That matches up as well. Which only tells me that your Obi-Wan global numbers over a week were probably somewhere in the realm of 30 million or more, at least. That doesn't look very good when you compare Ahsoka to that, but it looks good when you just put out a, a blank fucking number that doesn't really right. mean anything to anyone. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, it's a shrinking fan base that's, that's still fighting over like what scraps are left. Uh, and it gets followed up by the acolyte, dude. I mean, like that's their next show. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no one's gonna fucking watch that show. By the way, show run, uh, the I show am. runner. I am. Well, uh, we I are, am. of course. I am. Uh, I I need to point out it's obligatory that the showrunner is former Harvey Weinstein assistant Leslie Hedlund uh, for that show, <laughs> and they have well. nothing in production right now. So it's gonna be a couple years. So, I mean, there's that. That's good news. There is Skeleton Crew, which is, yeah. they I think, done it? and shot. Okay. So that is uh, in the Mandoverse. Some of the pirates that were in Mando Season 3, I think, should be involved in that. That's the uh, Jude Watson one. Well, that, um, that'll save Star Wars. No, totally. Or not, yeah. not Jude Watson, Jude Law. Sorry, Jude Law. I was combining him and his character <laughs> in Sherlock Holmes. Uh, <laughs> but, no, so that is there. I don't know when that's supposed to come out, though. Um, and I do think with obviously the strikes, they're probably going to, you know, extend things they're out gonna, a little longer than they would have to make sure they have enough, uh, stuff to cover everything. Do we get any, this strike over yet? Do we get any news? Anybody? <sighs> not as far as I know. Mm. So sad about that. I, I know I Joel, I, I, everyone's on strike for the Babylon B, right? How are you guys doing things? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, have to be, you guys are obviously part of the WGA. Uh, we've never paid our writers. So it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my <No>. God. <laughs> <laughs> No, I honestly, I, I wondered if this, did you see this news story that came out uh, this week about uh, the, what was it, the the, direct, the director, the national director of SAG-AFTRA was talking about how if this strike is continued, it's going to hurt our ability to write these worldview changing queer stories. <laughs> what? Um, I saw that. I did see that. That was funny. And and he oh, also no. got the, the HRC human rights uh group uh the the gay group involved basically because they score all these studios and these companies based off off of their lgbtq inclusion and he's warning that if if you don't fix this strike then your score is going to suffer and i was like well that's going to do it that's that's going to end the strike wow. right now because these companies are terrified these are like mafia tactics that these companies use are um, you saying that they're use. gay for pay joel <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, I mean, yeah, if anything could end the strike, I would think that would be it right there. I, I agree. I think that writing ends, ends everything. Well, ends I, all enjoyment anyway. If the strike ends t uh, tomorrow, next week, whenever it ends, the producers have already won. They, they, they won the minute the WGA went on strike and then when uh, the Film Actors Guild went on strike. 
uh, th- there's going to be fewer jobs. There's going to be fewer people to pay. So I'm sure the producers are like, all right, fine, we can do some of these deals because we're not paying as many horrible writers. Uh, I don't know if they get the mandated writer's room. That's insane. I don't know how any uh, writer worth his salt would want to work under that at all. Uh, But here we go. Uh, Film Actors Guild admits strike is preventing artists from making their worldview changing stories that push (laughs) LBGQ plus agenda. The agenda. The agenda. Instead yep, of the agenda, uh, how about the agenda yep. of telling a good story? Where's that no, agenda? Not. That's um, privilege. Oh, that's what that's uh, that that's what white that, privilege. It's, it's white supremacy too. I forgot. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. Yes, and mm-hmm. I I feel like we should take the opposite tactic, right? It's like if because they've been complaining that uh, there's just way too many white people, way too many white stories, all this stuff that's being pushed. Strike should be good, then, right? We don't get any more of that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what they should be arguing. <laughs> that's what I think we should start arguing. I, I think they started talking to each other because they realized nobody gave a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no. I think that really kind of probably the case. Yeah, it. it, it well, the, I mean, like, what's what's the currency in Hollywood? Because it's not fucking money, by the way. It's yeah. not clout, it's, I guess. It's clout, relevance, small children, and, and small children. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, flood. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but uh, they're they're feeling their relevance shrink. Uh, they're going to shrink as an industry. That's There's no way to turn that back now. And th- I think both sides finally came together going, oh, shit, we w- you know, this went too long. Uh, you know, I think the producers overestimated how much power they had. I think the WGA vastly overestimated uh, how much importance they, they had. Uh, we're writers. We make everything go. Yeah, but the majority of you aren't. The majority of you really oh. suck at your job, and you don't. You you should be like I don't know, delivering Amazon or something. I don't know, but uh, not <laughs> I wouldn't writing. Trust them to deliver fucking Amazon. I, was, I wouldn't yeah, trust them to fucking yeah, make a burger. It out there. I didn't say it was a good idea. <laughs> okay. You know what? I would trust them to. No, I can't. I can't say that. We get taken off air. No. Uh, well, l- mm-hmm. listen. Uh, we you know we had the guy I featured in my video who's like um. Yeah, I, I stopped getting paid, so I started gardening at my apartment, at my rent-controlled apartment, by the way, where I can't pay rent. So I helped with the garden. It's like, bro, did you get a job? Did you go out and yeah. get a job? Did you go drive for Lyft, Uber Eats, something? No. So he asked his union for help, and I'm like, why do you have to ask your union for help? Don't Don't they account for like if you're going on a strike aren't they going to help you? You remember when unions used to like unions used to uh, handle uh, your your health benefits. It, they used to be handled, this is many years ago, not through the company, but through your union. Uh, wh- what fucking purpose do they serve? Oh, they're just another boss. They take away your negotiation power, and now you have two people to answer to instead of one. Uh, and and having a union in 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 the arts, I think, is retarded. I think it's just ultimately retarded. These are, Being in the arts is pure meritocracy. And uh, yeah. you're, you're as good as you, what it's doing. It's preserving what, what I was always told what the unions were in Hollywood are they are gatekeepers. They keep people out. They want new members, but they also keep people out. They want to maintain control. That's that's all it is. And they have put so many mandates on these studios with like how many line producers you can have, what time you can shoot. It's ballooned the cost and, and add COVID to that. And now you see why something like the Marvels costs 300 million fucking dollars and it's a hundred minute movie. Really? So 300 million. Three hundred. Well, it's actually higher. It's actually higher. But uh, and we'll, we'll get to that. But yeah, so so SAG is worried that their agenda is not going to get be pushed. I talked to, we talked about it on Friday Night Tights uh, two weeks ago where the BlackRock dude came out and said, we're forcing behaviors now. I mean, I mean like, that's an old video, but it's an oldie buddy goodie. And, like, and a lot of people hadn't seen it. You know, that's, that's the thing about the Internet, right? We, we, a lot of us assume because we're paying attention all the time. It's like everybody's seen that, right? No. Nope. A lot of people had not seen that. And it's important that we be a little repetitive and show that stuff over and over again because there's new people coming in every time, and that is the kind of shit we're dealing. That's the kind of narrative that we're trying to break, That's right? true. Gary, have you read 1984? You really should. Uh, you know, I, I'll get around to it. Uh, hopefully there's an anime version. Uh, then, then live they can, action. They can recommend yeah. the anime oh, There's a live action. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck was that right there? <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. 
Oh my God. But Gary, you're absolutely right. There are so many people that are only just kind of waking up and they don't realize the, that so much of modern media is first and foremost propaganda. It's, it's to push the message. And we saw that in just in that article before that the writers, we need to share our, you know, our world changing message and everything. And it, they've, they've, <laughs> mask is already off but there's still a lot of people who are just unaware of it at this point no i i was uh watching um count count dankula was on with jeremy recording this morning it was a good live stream love dankula and uh he he just brought up a good point you know and it's and it's supposed to be controversial but uh, or it is controversial but i don't i don't care it's he said you should have stopped at marriage you should have stopped at marriage, and now we're seeing the mm. agenda get pushed way too far to where now it is drag story hour. By the way, been around for a while. They were pulling that crap when I was living in San Francisco, and they did have one at my kid's school, and he just didn't go to school that day. He just didn't. You know, I'm like, no, my kid's not going to school. Now they don't day. even tell you. If now they don't tell school. you. Now they don't tell yep. you. So that, that's been creeping in for a long time. And, uh, you know, of course, Disney got busted saying the not-so-secret agenda, and they say it right there, right out loud. It's our mm -hmm. agenda, not like acceptance, tolerance, whatever terms. Are, now it's straight up, oh, we're, yeah. this is our agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you have to, uh, yeah, not only can you, like, because tolerance was one thing. Yeah, you, you have your life, you do what you want. But now, no, 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 you have to embrace it and celebrate it as... No. Honestly, something superior to traditional relations and stuff. And if not, you're a bigot. That that's the you know the extent that they want. That's to push certainly things to it, you're you're right. That's the perception. So if if people in the LGBTQ community often wonder why there's so much resistance, it's not the fact that you exist. I, it, no, it's the compelled we get part. It. You exist. You exist. It's fine. Nobody <laughs> yeah. has a problem with that. It's no. Now our way is better than your way superior mm -hmm. to your way your yeah. way needs to be flushed out your way is wrong instead <clears throat> of uh what was supposed to be is just like living in unity which yeah. th this yeah. is that's not yeah. what it's about now it's more about revenge uh yeah. now it's more about uh pushing a a new religion it's it's mm -hmm. utterly yeah. it's treated as a as a uh, a, oh. a religion from like the 1600s by the way mm -hmm. you know uh we have inquisitions now uh, look what Gina you know we bring up what Gina was had to go through was going to go through a freaking struggle session on zoom with up to 40 oh. people yeah yeah 40 that's ridiculous it's a good thing that. that Bob Iger says that they want to quiet the noise yeah. in the culture war huh? yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's but talk seriously about like if any if anyone wants to test about what Gary just said then that you know one is uh, being pushed more go look at society and see what is celebrated more traditional relationship or the LGBT right. thing? Wait, 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 which one has an entire month, right? Like which one oh, is celebrated? What happened with that McDonald's like, commercial? McDonald's yeah, commercial. Yeah. Yeah. I was about yeah. the McDonald's commercial. Oh, I didn't hear about the McDonald's commercial. Oh, oh yeah. No. Cause it features gingers. You want to find that? Yeah. Yeah. Ronald McDonald's <laughs> butt fucking grimace, grimace comics is crazy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I saw the one the where there's the, mm. there, there was the Japanese ad and That's someone was, was claiming white supremacy, but. Yeah. It's and a like, Japanese ad. If you, it's a Japanese ad for. Yeah, it's that's the one I like saw. Like lo-fi girl, all grown up. Yeah. So this thing is like jumping off right now. Uh, it's so cute and wholesome. It's yeah. It's yeah. It's, it's, and that's the problem. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a traditional it's growing family. A traditional family. And they're mad and, because they're all white. And, and, and so this is another no, side. No, it's mad because it's a yeah. traditional family of a man and woman with a child. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And this shows how insidious this is because, yeah, one is being celebrated far, far more. And then in the other extreme, the other side, the traditional side is being demonized and vilified as something wrong, backwards and, and offensive <clears throat> because it's not representative enough. It's like, hang on, that's actually... Re representative of the majority of people's relationships of the human freaking race but right, no definitely. that's that's the thing that is and, and what yeah. people no, don't see too is that, that it's being forced uh unnaturally from the top down like i mean a lot of these companies don't want to be necessarily promoting this i mean bud light they they put dylan mulvaney on a on a bud light can because they have there are these organizations that score them there's the ESG scores. Mm -hmm. There's the HRC scores. There's a GLAD score. Um, it it factors into their stock performance. And they if they do not comply, they they get destroyed. 
And so like a lot of what seems like just natural, you know, pop culture movements is are, are a few small groups with a lot of power enforcing their will on on the people who deliver our, our culture. And it's uh, it's invisible. You're 100 percent correct. Uh, that's, that's what we started. That that's where that, you know, a lot of people we will pull that up in a second, Ryan. So keep that article. Yeah, you're good. You're yeah. Good. Um, is, is what we started noticing around 2016. It wasn't just the election of Donald Trump was, was this shift. And you can just, if you paid attention, I, you know, I was a fan of pop culture my entire life. I followed trends. You see how things naturally just mm. ha- trends happen naturally and they come yeah. from the ground up, not from the top <clears throat> down, from the ground up. And we that changed drastically with the Obama administration, by the way. That's where the, most of the woke shit started coming in. Uh, and that's where a lot of this stuff was developed. And we started seeing, you know, uh, Captain Marvel comics. They just kept producing them. And it's like it, failure after failure. So after the fourth time it's canceled, you would think they would stop. No. So the, I'm like, that's not right. That's They've never done that before with comic books. Like usually when, yeah. when something was canceled, that that hero was gone or thrown into a team, and maybe in ten years they got another another shot at it. No, it was immediately we're canceling it, giving it another number one, and they're doing it to this day with Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel. That's just one very very small example. Star Trek Discovery in normal times would have been canceled after season two. It gets five fucking seasons. And nobody's watching it. Nobody cares. It's not making Paramount any money. As a matter of fact, Paramount stock today was trading at twelve dollars a share. Twelve. Wow. Twelve. That's 12. Awful. It's not above Warner Brothers Discovery. Oh. It might be. It might be. And, and think so about it. Warner, Warner Brothers has yeah. Batman and Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings, and they they suck. Warner Brothers uh, at eleven. It, it's at eleven. Um, and Disney's you know down to eighty. But Netflix in the meantime, and somebody's going to have to explain this to me. Because Netflix, for for most of their existence on this planet, was in the red, was in the red. But now their stock is trading at four hundred bucks. So I, you know, I don't get it. I don't. But you know, I'm not a financial analyst. But then we have this, I, bro. I, I was laughing so hard when I woke up yesterday morning and saw this. <laughs> shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Disney uh, CEO plans to quiet the noise in the culture war. This was noise. written. This is on National Review by Caroline Downey on September 20th. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't help. I felt like I had deja vu or something. Well, you did. Disney CEO plans to quiet the noise in the culture war. So then I, of course, very quickly looked something up and I realized that back in November, <laughs> this is an article from Caroline Downey on National Review with the same fucking Bob Iger picture. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Disney CEO plans to quiet down culture war controversies. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my God. It's a year apart. How, just a year apart? Wow. Yeah, and, and what did what did we see right after Bob Iger said this? Oh. Uh, those of us in positions to influence law and shape culture have an extra responsibility to push gun control. Uh. What else did we see? <laughs> Bob Iger claiming that pushing the trans and gay agenda on children is the equivalent of the civil rights movement and of stopping World War II. Right? Yeah. <laughs> this wow. is what we since he said we need to quiet oh. down the culture war. Yeah, shit. like, oh. That's funny. What he means is we're going to be quieter about what we're doing. They're not going to exactly. stop doing what exactly. they're doing. They're going to be yeah. more secret. They're going to be more yeah. s- snaky about it. Well, yeah, that means they're not going to be on Zoom calls saying, uh, ask me about my gay agenda shit. Yeah, but the media that they produce will be just as woke as before. Absolutely. Yeah, nothing's they'll changing. Probably, there'll probably be less company statements. From oh, Disney, Disney, Disney so. will be the last to the change party uh, yeah. if they arrive at all. That like they will. Th- I think they'll burn they won't. before they, they change. They, 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 it, it's that hill to die for them, on. Yeah, for them to change, like, for one, you would have to get rid of Bob Iger because he's a, he's, well, he's an empty suit. That guy will do whatever he needs to do for his fucking ego. He overspent on everything. All he did was buy shit. He didn't innovate jack shit. Also, you'd have to fire almost everybody at Disney for them to change. Yes. Yep. Yep. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's not even hyperbolic. No, it's, no. It's, it, it's infested in every single corner. We saw from from the not so secret gay agenda leaks and all that. It is infected from the top down. The, these this isn't just a, a management. This isn't a Kathleen Kennedy thing. They have brought people in to these institutions in their teams, and they have secured the whole fucking lot. Yep. This isn't a few good people fighting against them. No, the whole system is mm-hmm. done. Every fucking one of them thinks the same way. 
has the same politics, has everything. They are single-minded. There is nothing here whatsoever that can be changed unless the whole fucking thing is torn down. So and this is people, a hill that they will die on. Yeah. And if people don't believe you, look at how much Elon had to clean house when he took over yeah. Twitter. Like, oh, yeah. Twitter 100%. was just as infested as Disney. And, yeah. and they're full of these activists. And he still he basically had house. to replace the entire, you know, yeah, Joel, he, I mean, he probably wasn't able to clean the entire house. I mean, that's probably not even possible. No, okay. Well, do you guys want to hear a little story? Sure. So, yes. um, sure. so you, you guys know Elon bought Twitter last year. Um, Did he? Shortly after his... Uh, so when we got kicked off of Twitter, when the Babylon Bee got kicked off of Twitter, he was in Germany uh, building his his Gigafactory. And he he came back to the States and realized, where you know, the, the bee's gone. What happened to the bee? He likes reading the bee. And so he reached out to us and um, talked to our, our editor-in-chief and talked to our editor-in-chief for like two hours about how angry he is about woke stuff. And he, he specifically brought out Vikings. He's, he talked about how net, Netflix has ruined Vikings. Now we have like black female Vikings and stuff like yes, that. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. He just went on this epic rant of just about how everything is woke and he's so sick of it. And then at the end of that conversation, he said, maybe I should just buy Twitter. And then the next day he put out that uh -huh. poll, do you think Twitter abides they by didn't the, want him the talking. free speech? And, uh, and, and there it was, but, but he, I mean, you know, we've had conversations since, and he said that there are still snakes in the grass there. I mean, he's still, yes. it, it's, I mean, almost he just hired one as a fucking CEO for fuck's yeah, sake. I, I don't understand that. I, that's, yeah, yeah, that that's was such a weird wild decision. To me. Wasn't Jim Baker working there still yes. like at least a year yeah, in there? The, the, the feds had fucking offices. Well, they're former feds. Sorry. They had retired from the FBI and just retired. got a job the sure. next day. Oh, and they, they were totally not still, you know, doing stuff for the government. Yeah, so, totally uh, not at all. Joel, that has to be happening at, uh, I would say, every single major company, movie studio, uh, Google, Facebook. I, it's They're filled with uh, three-letter agencies, the alphabet agencies yep. and the alphabet mafia. Yep. Uh, oh my gosh! Working yeah. against the American people to to suppress your free speech. Always have been. Oh, and God. he's and, and he's he's still not out of the woods. I mean, he's being investigated by the DOJ now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this what Elon did to Twitter also needs to happen with Google and YouTube yep. and all the rest of these. Mm -hmm. But I just I don't see anyone anyone else with the the balls to do it. I mean, it's if you're going to put a target on your back. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Rumble just did that. So, I mean, good for them. Oh, that was awesome. For was holding awesome. up yeah. and everything. But with uh, Mr. Brand, which, man, you can barely talk about on YouTube, but whatever. Uh, we saw that letter go out from the UK Parliament, which was just foul. But we know that our government sent one. Sh fucking, you know, the EU probably sent one, too. Uh, and it, it Zelensky probably sent one. What was that? Please listen to Slinsky probably send one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys see the Ukrainian uh, media put out uh, a clip of Zelensky's speech, but they actually spliced in a different audience. So so they panned yes. the audience while Zelensky's speaking, and they see Zelensky sitting in the crowd. He's in the audience. In yeah. No. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, my God. That was funny. Like it was a bigger, <laughs> Epic. Like it was a bigger, bigger yeah. audience for Zelensky. Hey, was that a uh, yeah. big ad in New York? Was that real? The the urine one, the, I don't know. I thought it was a I Babylon B headline. I thought, it, well, there was a big. They're like they a, accidentally said like, "Welcome to urine" or, or something. Support, instead of welcome support to Ukraine. urine or support not, urine. Yeah, yeah support yeah. urine. And it was a giant like billboard. But I'm like that's probably fake. But it was funny. It was still funny. Oh, I didn't it was see a giant that. Ukrainian flag. It was going all over Twitter. I just assume everything's oh, wow. fake until somebody tells me it's real. Well, but, it's gotten to that point with me too, Gary. Like the amount of false crap that has been put out to propagandize the, that conflict has just made me feel like I can't believe a single friggin' thing now yeah. because there is so much just made like actual fraud in terms of what they've been making. So. Well, that's why it's important. We, I mean, we got to be smart, right? But we need to be on Rumble and other places. Uh, so we can continue breaking this narrative because they're going to take people out. People are just going to get taken out. That's the nature of the game. You don't black pill and give up. You know, we, we just need, if they take one of us out, you know, replace it with a hundred more people with a microphone and a connection, bring people on. Right. It's, it, it, we, we need to keep doing this. This is too important of a fight. Elon the brought same that up. Thing happened, 
with the printing press when the printing press was invented you know the 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 church came after all these different presses and what they considered heresies and people were burned at the stake and they were shutting people down you can't you can't keep the truth down it's just going to find another place it's Mm -hmm. always going to come to the surface no matter how many times you try to suppress it no and and the the fact that they went after the b the babylon b they took down a satire site <laughs> yeah Which, because satire ridiculous. became reality gary that was the problem i know, I, I know. well and the b is <laughs> actually Babylon funny. B became prophetic which it was <laughs> never meant to be <laughs> well they know how effective they know how effective humor is i mean uh like saul yeah. Alinsky's, one of his rules for radicals is that uh, ridicule is one of your most potent weapons and so yeah, i, I think they've known that for a long time mm-hmm. uh that, that it, mockery is very hard to stand up against and uh I think they had from the very beginning. They kind of knew that we had to t- have to do something with the B, and it started with the fact checks. The fact checks were the funniest. I think the first one that, that they fact checked was uh, we we had a headline that was uh, or CNN purchases industrial sized washing machine to spin the news before publication, uh. <laughs> and, and that got a fact check from Snopes, like a two page fact check. They actually called CNN. They did like a deep dive investigation and and. Uh, those were always so fun. Um, and it's satire. But, they're they're fact checking yeah. satire, which is ridiculous. I mean, it just shows you funny. the state of the world. Well, <laughs> it really is ridiculous. They know yeah. they're doing it, so it's evil. Like they yes. know it's they're right. Not, they're not dumb. They know it's fucking satire, what, and it's evil. Well, what happened in in uh, in twenty twenty uh, October? So right before the election of twenty twenty, um, the New York Times did a hit piece on us. A guy named Kevin Roos, it's one of their tech guys there, did this hit piece, and basically the the theme of the piece was. Uh, Babylon B is a danger to democracy because too many people might think their stories are real. And it oh, shit. Like, <laughs> wow. Sake. Oh, boy. And uh, he, he called us a purveyor of disinformation under the guise of satire. Oh, and, my God. Um, within days, like I want to say three or four days, our Facebook engagement just like disappeared. Like someone at Facebook pressed a button and we were gone. Like you could, people were getting wow. people were getting put in Facebook jail for sharing our articles. And, uh, and we haven't recovered since. Uh, i love it that my kid my kid shared this one with me the other day so (laughs) oh my gosh (laughs) it's so true though we We always think about the roman empire we do i i just wrote a short story about the roman empire i'm always thinking about it yeah I was just thinking about magic. fucking aqueducts the other day. You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Some of them are still in use today. It's incredible. Yeah, I was. We were just a mm-hmm. bath. Or well, that sorry, is bath. a weird thing. Uh, that you is know a that weird they still put crime. flowers on the grave of Julius Caesar. Wow. People do still do. Yeah, that's awesome. Those those people are thinking about the Roman Empire. They are. Speaking of which, uh, today's Hobbit Day. Okay, hang on, hang on. Wait, oh. I need a point out. No congratulations, Comics Division. Oh, I knew that was coming. <laughs> We need to point this out. Ryan literally says that he he thinks about effing aqueducts. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you know they're always wet. That's right, Hello. Chrissy. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there baby. Go. Oh, no worries there. Uh, wow, I was trying to segue into <laughs> ain't nothing worse to, than a dry to, hole to Shad and my visit to Tolkien's grave, and you just interrupted it with Ryan wanting to fuck aqueducts. <laughs> he oh, said man. it. I just. <laughs> But we got that. That was pretty brilliant, man. We went that to Oxford, good. and it's like this unassuming mm-hmm. graveyard. Uh, the only mm-hmm. funny thing is when you walk in, it says 2001 Graveyard of the Year <laughs> or Cemetery of the Year. <laughs> There's an award, and it, it's really proud of its award for being Cemetery of the Year. But was it like for cleanliness because they like took in the most people? They, it might hey. be, yeah, over a you know a thousand served, <laughs> <laughs> over a million served. Uh, but we went, that was that was a surreal experience being there, man. Um, Bro, last time I was in a, a I, I visited a graveyard not that long ago, and someone's like, "Wow, there's been there's been a lot more like you know a lot more graves, a lot more bodies and stuff in here." I'm like, "What? You think it's gonna fucking shrink?" <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. They skip and leave on occasion. But this was a, like a good uh, happy hobby Hobbit day, everybody. Mm. That's right. It's Bilbo and Frodo's birthday. Congrats. We bow to no one. We bow to no man. We bow to no man. And uh, yesterday was uh, the anniversary of the publication of The Hobbit. Uh, oh. So, yeah, yeah. September's a good month for Tolkien fans. Mm. And, hey, they didn't release Rings of Power. No. On the anniversary of his death. 
That's fucking ass. Are, are they planning on doing that next year? Oh, probably. I, you know what? All I'm hoping for is Zaslav. Like they have House of the Dragon finished, and then they're just waiting for Amazon to announce the season two of Rings of Power, and then they they were like, okay, we're going to come out a week before it again. Oh, <laughs> they do that again. I, I hope they do. I God, the ultimate f you. Well, oh, they did it. it on purpose. That was like the, that was so great that they were like like doing dick measuring contests between these two <laughs> giant companies. And I'm I'm here for it. It was great. And oh, and the showrunners of Rings of Power, you know that made them so so pissed. You know they were salty oh, as hell about that. And you're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> do you know do you know why they shouldn't have been salty? Because they should have been like, we've made a really good product here, yep. and uh, yep. people are going to love this regardless. Mm -hmm. The only time you get mad is when you realize that you have made a piece of fucking shit and you're Boom. desperate for nothing to be uh, up against it so that you can try and garner as much time as possible. But uh, no, and season two is going to be just as bad as season one because they doubled down on that fucking thing. Oh, so good luck. It might we'll be, be here. It might be worse with the lore of things I've heard already are just, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, and what have you heard? But, but Gary, they said Caliborn. they're gonna follow the books more accurately. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, so they, so they're supposed gonna, to be an apology. You know? They're gonna try to Celeborn, Galadriel's husband, is going Dead to husband. show up who's been missing for a thousand years. Like it'll how be do you another Ezra now? reunion, like yeah. an awkward hug. I, yeah, probably, yeah, how you do, Galadriel. Probably he's gonna come back and went, I went out for some pipe weed. Uh sorry, I never <laughs> came back. You know, but he's probably gonna come back like uh, torn down like he'll be some you know beta or uh, they'll, they'll they'll cuck him in some way by the way she's supposed to have a daughter too i don't know if they're going to introduce the daughter but it like the, he was supposed to be there already and they're supposed to be there with the daughter already um it's fanfic for for one they can't tell the story so i i have a video out uh called uh, rings of power making of a disaster came out last year uh we talk about all this but Essentially, a lot of the stuff that you recognize, not everything, but most, is rented from Warner Brothers. Hmm. So, that, so they were very limited of what rights they had. And they, they talk about having rights to The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings books. No, they have the rights to the appendices. They cannot yep. make the other or, or anything. From, that's why they're they, – you, we're not celebrating Harfoot Day. We're celebrating <laughs> Hobbit Day. <laughs> so Calabrian, Day. they might bring her in. Arthas. I don't know, but but uh, we've already heard like there's big battles, and they're setting up Galadriel to maybe like I could. I, it's not going to make it this long, but if they do make it to the end, she'll probably be right there in the War of the Last Alliance, probably you know leading the way. <laughs> It'd be so fucking terrible, but um, the people defending it were the worst. Uh, I love I love the shills that were completely for it, and then they came out with their honest reviews later. So uh, yeah. uh, you know, it, it was a year ago. Are you uh, watching it? No, I'm watching Game of Thrones instead. <laughs> it's a much better yeah. show. Yeah. House, of, well, I mean, as as said, House of the Dragon knew they had they like Ryan Kendall knew he had a good show. Like absolutely knew it. Like we've got a banger. People are gonna like this. They were completely confident about mm -hmm. it, and that's when you could tell. And that's why it's such a rare thing. To get a good show like that, that uh, I'm, I've rewatched like three times now, it's so fucking good, and I can't wait for season two. But um, you know, I, yeah, I just hope they release at the same time because, like, again, we have Ahsoka and One Piece, and we can compare. Like, one's a really fucking good show, and one is just more crap. But now you can see what's good and bad contrast right next to each other, playing along. The only thing is, One Piece should have released weekly. I wish I was Jeremy was here to argue yeah. about it, but it should have released. Weekly. I agree. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. Good talk, guys. All right. No binge model. <laughs> I'm holding back because I did think, well, look, the binge model actually helped me warm up to it because I wasn't sold on the first episode and I might have just checked out then. But it was after I got to like the third episode. And it's because I, they were all there available, ready to go, that I it won me over. And so look, you probably, I agree. You, I you could have been won over after the, the weekly after, series had after run. After it yes. came out. Yeah, yeah. Because I oh, look, I, I agree that um, weekly is a better form of release. It's it is, just, because you would have had, like, One Piece is still amazingly popular. But people are still freaking talking about it more than your mm -hmm. average binge series. I'm not going to deny that at all. People are, like, more people mm -hmm. are still getting into it. But imagine two yeah. months 
of weekly discussions. And then when mm -hmm. it's all over, then it brings in a whole new crowd that will stream. Yeah. Well, I mean, just and look that, with so Ahsoka. I mean, we're, we're talking about on a weekly months. basis and that's awful. And it's awful. And it'll be forgotten <laughs> when it's done. But yeah. when you have something good, you release it weekly and then it brings in a new crowd that like on that word of mouth, we're waiting to, to binge it and they'll binge it. That'll make it last another month. Uh, and you have this mega fucking hit. I mean, it's already a mega hit, but it would have been twice yeah. as much. I, I'm really curious about the studio that made this, having been the, the same ones that made Cowboy Bebop, which was terrible. Um, and, and the fact that they they learned between then and now and made changes. Um, I would love a peek behind the scenes at what changes they made, like it, like how that happened. Because I, I would well, love to see that happen with more more well, studios. They oh. gave the author power and control. Yeah, real yeah. power. Yeah. Like he mm -hmm. like they, yeah. they reshot scenes on his word. Like uh, that's the kind of power yeah. he had. And uh like I had no concept. The the weebs out there will have concepts, so please forgive me, but I'm a newbie to this and a normie to this. But this the the creator, he created the the one of the most popular mangas ever, one of the most popular animes ever. He's got lots of power. And he could have just told mm -hmm. Netflix to fuck off and it wouldn't have bothered him at all. Uh, guys, guys doing good. He doesn't show his face too, which I kind of like. I kind of yeah. Like a that. lot of those creators yeah. don't do that. Yeah. Lo yeah. Well, like the longest time, uh, Demon Slayer, uh, they didn't realize that the creator was a, was female. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Well, she she didn't reveal her face, and um, she mainly used like this crocodile avatar. And uh, yeah, for the longest time, you know, people didn't know. So why why do I mean I think it's really smart by the way it lets your work speak for yourself by the way yeah, yeah. I think that's mm -hmm. that's a good idea but uh, is there another reason they do it is it like they can't walk around Japan or they'll be like bum rushed like the Beatles or something or? couldn't tell you couldn't tell you on that one well, no, that could be something to do with it because I yeah. mean you know these things are very popular and the creators would get a lot of attention I asked Wall Island. Google and it said chances of death threats and doxing okay so. Well, I mean, that makes sense. Well, there's people who take this stuff very seriously. As well. Yes, I, I yeah. guess. You, I guess you killed so. off my favorite character. How dare you? Mm -hmm. Jeez. I guess so. Hey, uh, we could start reading super chats. You want to do that? We can. We can. Sounds good. I should, probably, yeah, I should probably pull them up first before I say that. <laughs> always, a, always well, a good plan. Well, yeah. while, while I was Joel, doing Joel that, is... oh, go on, Chad. No, no, you go. I was just. No, gonna I was going to say, Joel, is there anything you would like to plug? You have it. You said you had a book about gender. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be have... talked about in every elementary yeah. school across America. <laughs> We're going to get it into every library. And hold on. Yeah, it'll it'll get banned, but you can have like a teaching ten year olds how to this blow jobs yeah, this or is, something. This is the definitive guide. This will tell you everything that you need to know. Wow. about how to pick your gender, uh, how to find who you're attracted to, how to attract different genders if, you know, if you're lonely. Um, and it has a lot of pictures. So it's, you know, a lot of nice diagrams, oh, spells everything out. Again. Oh, my God. Here, let me zoom in. Like you'll see Joe Biden in a sports bra, I think, at one point. Um, <laughs> oh, so, wow. Uh, can, can you send me that for research purposes? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good toilet reader. Uh, definitely pick one up. It's fun. We had a lot of fun making it. Oh, awesome. Do you ship to Canada? Oh, of course. Yeah, I'll so, I'll send you. I'll go. I'll send you guys a signed copy if you if you give me your. Uh, <gasps> yeah. yeah, yeah, that'd be fantastic. I actually, Joel, Joel, yeah. I forget which one, but I bought one of the other Babylon B books for um like a, a relative for Christmas, and they loved it. I forget which oh, one. Oh, good. Was. The the I guide to wokeness. Book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was our first one. Yeah, it's just jam packed with so many funny like pictures and jokes and things. Yeah, it's a good gag gift. We're yeah. next year. We're doing the uh, the Babylon Bee Guide to Surviving the Fall of Western Civilization. It'll be oh, yeah. <laughs> Just we're time. pretty much there. <laughs> yeah, wow. exactly. It's not far away. <laughs> Oof, dude, it's so sad. Um, you know, because I'm very oh, much yeah. into traditionalism when it comes to like architecture and stuff. And obviously, mm. we just went to the UK. Oh so, man, God, it was so. I, yeah. Unbelievable. I, bet it's I did a bet it's depressing to come back to the States after that, seeing that little It is after stuff. walking through Oxford and Oxford was oh, beautiful. That was great. Man. And uh did yeah. you see the did you see the rabbit room or the like the tavern where Tolkien and Lewis used to to meet? Uh Ooh. I forget what it was called. I thought I think it closed during it closed. COVID. I forget what it was it closed. Called. Is it closed? I don't know if the building's it. there or not, but it's gone. Yeah. Oh, that's Eagle sad. And child, yep. 
It was, uh, it was, so we just went around the school. There was a like cool little Tolkien gift shop. We, we, uh, you know, went, went to the gravesite. but like Shad and I were just marveling and, and all of us were marveling at the architecture. We, yeah. we, we mm. ate at a, at a pub that was established in what, 900 or something like that. and had cobblestone. Oh, in that's the nice. so cool. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, cool. It was insane. The, the, the best way I could describe Oxford was like, it was basically a city that was also a work of art, like the whole yeah. collective yeah. kind of thing, because the buildings were just unbelievably incredible. Uh, the yeah. Well, the universities are now completely fucking taken over by crazy. Yeah, 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 we saw a bit of that. Like school was just about to start, so all the ki- all the woke kids were getting into town. <laughs> so, uh, <yeah. laughs> like Gary, weren't we talking about something on the train, and we got dirty looks from someone? Oh, we were talking like, about gender on the train. Yeah, gender, gender. <laughs> what? Like, very loudly. We were well, talking about well, well, yeah, specifically trans, like yeah. how they're always making the female characters look ugly, like in Mortal Kombat and stuff. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Gary noticed someone giving us real dirty looks. Some stink <laughs> eye on the train. You are was not she- supposed to notice that when they make female video game movie characters ugly you are not supposed yeah. to notice that uh, was the person who's giving you the evil was she ugly yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> probably <laughs> yes oh i'm sorry i didn't realize you wanted to see yourself in the video game <laughs> you ugly bitch yeah <laughs> yeah uh yeah we were being obnoxious australians and americans and it was mm-hmm. great oh absolutely uh that so bookstore uh, outside of uh, Clarkson's farm that we went to, and you and I were like oh, joking dude, around. We're like pulling the book. That book was published in in 1858. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, I got it on my shelf. Wow. I got it on my shelf. I got mine there. downstairs. Yeah, th- awesome. We got them for next to nothing. I can't believe that was yeah. so cheap. Yeah. Dude, Over under 100, under 100 year pounds. Old leather bound. Leather what are bound they? Show them. I got a giant, I got a giant book of... Um, <laughs> of a medieval architecture that was published in 18 that's the book all right so i, I wanted wow. that one oh, i, I won that, that book Look but at you... that. they were like all over the shelf <laughs> yeah all those books are like hundreds of, hundred years old all those books yeah. are over hundred years old that's really cool they're like we didn't expect to sell this to a man in cargo shorts today but here nope. you go <laughs> <laughs> i didn't dude okay uh i can talk about this now i didn't expect to wear wow. cargo shirt shorts in the uk and i only brought one pair so I, just, <laughs> I had to rock them most of the time because it was like 95 degrees. Oh. So it there was you go. so hot. You're sweating I was everywhere. Just, no uh, AC. I was just trying to fit in with all the smelly Euros there. No so. AC in the UK. So I, I didn't get that book. Heathens. No, you're, the book you got was freaking right. Got you got this. two. You got two books. I got two. Yeah. This is two volumes. And so this is actually. Um, Family Ooh. crests. Yes. Oh, nice. That's cool. Oh, and that's, it's over 100 awesome. years old. This is insane. This is like information you can't even find online. It's no, not no. Wow. You okay. do and need so, to scan it, by the way, yeah, Shad. Yeah, I need to because volume one is just just full of family names and text descriptions of the crests. Wow. And then it has a reference point to this volume. And this volume is just full of, of family wow. crests. Of, like family crests. Damn. Like, like Game of really Thrones. Cool. And like this is it's all so from freaking eight, cool. This is all from the 1800s, by the way. So like, like, like wow, yeah, yeah. This book is legitimately a hundred years old, over a hundred years old, and like I, I, I flipped out when when I found this, <laughs> and actually I would love to digitize it because we were looking up our names. Like, like I looked yep. up my family name. That's really and cool. Gary looks up his, and and. And <laughs> I don't want to really say. Oh, what, what we know. Well, we, we know. Oh, we know what's. Well, I mean, okay, I'll say it. there's options. There there's is options, options because... but you know what <laughs> yeah. was on Shad's? What there's, was on Shad's what... crest? Oh, it... don't say it, guys. A bear. A bear. bear. Oh, oh, bear. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Can I? Can I read it verbatim? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me find it. Let me find so, it. Oh, there no, are no. multiple Brooks family crests, okay? That was just one. <laughs> now, we narrowed one. it down to Shad's, and it was definitely Bear. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. We couldn't narrow okay, mine down because my my last my original last name was Knight. So that was the way All too right. much. Yeah. There's heaps of nights. On a mount, a bear muzzled and chained. <laughs> <laughs> just own it, Shad. But the bear. The more just you protest, it's the bear not going the away, Shad. It's not it's going literally, away. Literally, 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 is, it, is it rainbow colored? 
muzzled and chained. The bear is muzzled and chained in the in the crest. Is that I looked up mine there? and it said man with breasts. I was like, what? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is this? All right. No. Okay. The cat's <laughs> out of the bag. I'll actually look it up and show. I just need I need to reference it in the other volume and I'll find it again. I, I might actually have a picture of it. Oh, because... you probably do. Oh, of course you do. Oh, I got to send you guys. Hey, I have tons of video pictures volume. I need to send you. Uh, yeah. No, I don't. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. One second. Uh, of course, of course uh, you do. That's why she's the best producer on the planet. She that's shows it. The yeah. that's wow. it. <laughs> oh my Jeez. god! Damn. Oh, that's uh, that's some kink right there. <laughs> well, who knew? Who knew? Is Brooks, is that is that BDSM? The, the that bear girl? is definitely yeah. a catcher. It's multiple, right? But I'll, I'll, like, but th this is the book where it's just family names this is how thick it is and it just has like loads of family names and so this is more comprehensive than the sites wow. you can actually look up online and look it doesn't have full heraldry because a coat of arms is combined of multiple things the crest is the symbol above the helmet so so if you see a family if you see a coat of arms you got the shield above the shield is a helmet and above the helmet is the crest it's the crest of the helmet and so this is specifically documenting the crests um, there you go Freaking cool. Yeah. I hope like medieval shed. pronouns. <laughs> shed, um, I hope yeah. discovering sure, we'll the bear that. didn't make you feel crestfallen. Hey. <laughs> the, the truth is, the truth is, there's multiple Brooks family crest. Or oh, they're not family crest. Keep telling yourself that. There's multiple. Uh, multiple. <laughs> hey, I, don't have to, I don't have to pick a bear. I don't have to pick a bear. She's a professional. The bear has folks, chosen so you. The bear chose you. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. Um, that was a hell of a trip, by the way, Shad. It was great oh, it was, meeting you, oh, that was, running was around uh, Tower of London with you. You were the best tour guide they've ever seen. Uh, it was it was such a good time. Uh, that was great. We're going to get to the Super Chats now. Wait, the Super Chat portion of our show. We're trying to, like... Um, <clears throat> I have a time limit, you know, so <laughs> it's something I promised all the co-hosts, I think three years ago. Um, yeah. Yeah. When I came on, you're like, we'll only do three hours. And the first show was like five hours. Yeah. It goes to seven. Well, they, they used, okay. They used to be six. The, That's the true. Show, wow. They used to be six hours. And so, uh, um, I, I'll just quickly show people. Uh, all He's the really trying to cope of, his way out. Yeah, of this I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, wow. All the variations of Brooks. All the variations. Yeah, all the different Brooks. types of bears. Stop. We get it. We get it. Brooks has heaps. Brown bear. There's a black bear. Yeah. There's a gray yeah. bear. There's a, a grizzly bear. bear. Yeah, yeah. we got it. Yellow bear. Grizzly. Who are you all? Yogi bear. There's a bear and an otter. There's a care bear. Hey, Shad. Bear. Shad, I could go on Twitter and write a super long gay blog about how I can't associate myself with you anymore, but we don't. Hey. We still love you. <laughs> we still love you. Yeah, Unconditional. we can't bear to be around you. You like anymore. bears? Hey. That's your thing. Uh, no, no, no. This one sounds great. This is Brooks, right? Lances, a demi lion holding between the paws an arrow. Horse. That one sounds cool. Horse is in bear paws. It's a lion. It's a lion as. Come on. Uh, that sounds unbearable to me. <laughs> um, there's actually a couple of lion songs. Oh, <laughs> I, I, can't, I gave you I, a rim shot. This is, one, mm, mm. <laughs> this is one of my prized possessions now, though. Like, mm. see these things. Um, and I and yeah, like I can't believe how cheap it was. If I saw this online, dude, and like if so what is someone told me like for a book like that, well, I would like if someone told me this was a thousand dollars, I'd be like, well, that makes sense. That makes it's sense. It's a yep. piece of history. Mm -hmm. It has has information that you that can't might be the only kind. It, that might be the only one that yeah. exists. Like, there's yeah, a very yeah. good like, chance. Wow. Like this is crazy, right? Seventy pounds. Yep. For for one. What's that I in really, real money? Like, a <laughs> hundred bucks. Uh, hundred bucks. About a hundred. Hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. That's and not so, bad. It's not bad at like, all. I, wow. I can't believe. I couldn't believe it. And the guy oh, was apologetic. Like these books are old. They're still together. And he's like, "Oh, that one's not very good shape." And that that guy who ran the shop was so fucking cool. So he, British he and awesome. so cool, putting yeah. up with our idiocy so in nice. there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Do you have any books about bears? <laughs> yeah. What's up, dude? That's what I was. Dude. I was 
Bro, right. isn't it like, like surfing books in here for the 1800s or something? <laughs> uh, Roland the Wretched. Man, we're starting oh, out with Roland. Uh, oh. Four parts for one hundred dollars. Saved all that money because he's not waxing his balls anymore. Hey. <laughs> letting them grow out for the gr- winter. Let it grow out. Uh, you never hurry. know where you are going to find the fellowship. I was in my backyard this week hanging my laundry to dry when comics came uh, zip lining through. There is video evidence in your XDM if you want to show it. Shout out to D Day McLean for this. Is it is it in mine? Do I have to look it up? I can look it up. Rolling, but let me continue. Uh, the next battle in the culture war started this week, and like pineapple pizza, Ryan finds himself on the wrong side of candy cor- of the candy corn skirmish. Everyone yeah. needs to no, he does not. Hashtag I stand with Jay and stop the candy corn hate. Strike me down with all your hatred, Ryan. I am sure that Shad is glad to be back in the, in the prison colony with his beloved emus. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. You're an emus bitch, by the way. Just don't forget that. Uh, oh, <laughs> Hope they took no, over. no, no, no. That's not how that works. The That's allies works. are the ones that the emus. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah they, That's they right. My brothers and sisters. <laughs> uh, hope they took over in his absence and destroyed every last jar of Vegemite. I do too. Uh, oh, really? Because uh, the reaction of Vegemite was nowhere near as as negative as that, Gary. Did you put that video up yet? Is that not yet? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm oh, waiting I'm for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gary, you're made... you're. A... You're a sick fuck. Thank you, yeah. As. Well, guess what, As? Uh, so is X-Ray Girl, so is Garrett then, so is Adam, Ad, Ad, yeah. so is yeah, You're so not is saying Gary. anything I don't know. So is Gary's wife. <laughs> all a bunch of backstabbers, that's all they are. Oh, all yeah, a bunch of Veg- Dan Basque voting, subbing backstabbers, wow. that's all they Veggie, are. Veggie might appreciating wonderful people, that's who they are. Veggie might not, mate. Oh yes. Oh, Get, Gary made the film actors guild sad this week and they tried to delete a video but like with everything else they failed, which is true. Mm-hmm. Uh today's read Job 127. Uh but now ask the beans and let them teach or the bears. Why did I say beans? God, I really <laughs> I'm having a stroke. You're thinking about his beans, I think. I'm thinking about beans. Fuzzy beans. Beans. Let's try beans. that again. Today's beans means Job 12-7. But now ask the bears and let them teach. And the emus <clears throat> of the heavens and let them tell you time to say hail to FNQ. That's Friday Night Queers. Uh, <laughs> fellowship <laughs> chat, Baby Thor, Pineapple Pizza, and Candy Corn. Dan Vask is gay. And hashtag nerdrotic until next week. So long, gay boys. Thank you, Roland. May you burn in hell. No, wow. <laughs> Roland, you're good in my book. You're always good in my book. Valiant Renegade for 50. What are you doing? Do you have videos to make? Valiant, cheers to FNT. Have a great show, guys. I'll be listening on the boat. Oh, okay. So he just wanted to humble brag that he's on a boat. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Cool. I respect that. Uh, cruising on the open waters with a fishing pole. Oh, that sounds magnificent. Yeah, good for you, man. Is that down in, where is he? Is he at, well, I don't want to dox him. Did, did Louisiana people, Louisiana, somewhere. yeah. So are you on in the swamp? Are you like gator hunting? That'd be fun. Swamp People was my one of my favorite reality shows of all time. They, Dude, the first like four seasons of that, I just, I watched everything. And then at some point it was like, all right. Yeah, I got. You're right. The first four seasons are magic, dude. Uh, especially with the old, the soggy bottom boys, whatever the brothers who would like have yeah. rat soup and shit. And it's like it's <laughs> so good. And that one, that turtle man guy who then yeah. like that was like the logging thing. Remember the, like the they did swamp or like <laughs> swamp loggers or something. Yep. Uh, Axe Men. I watched the fuck out of Axe Men. Yep. Dude, I used to watch a History Channel like nonstop, and it had nothing to do with history. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, but Swamp People was like an all time great shoot em, show. Shoot him, Clint, shoot him. Yep, yep. Just watching, oh, yo, 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 yo. Blow, just watching somebody take a fucking rifle and blow, blow the, blow the brains so, out of a fucking alligator at point blank range while you have them tied onto a wire. To a, There's something that's very American about that. It is, yeah. They're, they're, so if you haven't seen it, they're, they're in these little metal fucking boats and they're allowed to go hunt 
gators because they're overpopulated or whatever. And yeah, they basically have a fucking string with a bunch of meat on the end. It's not a string. It's a they way. put a bunch of chicken on the end of a big hook. They yep. tie it to a tree. They fucking leave for like the day or like 12 hours or whatever. They come back later. Ooh, lines down, Clint. Line, line, line down. Line down. Gator here. And he just starts, <laughs> you start tugging on the thing and pulling it up. And maybe there's a big ass fucking gator on there. And then they wrestle with it and it's wild. And then the guy just like very slowly puts the gun right to this one specific point in the gator's head and just blows his brains blows out. His brains out. <laughs> they haul him up in the boat. Fucking he moves around a little bit as he's like dead. Like this weird, like as his muscles do whatever. The and they nerves. fuck it on to the next one. And dude, some of those gators are <laughs> fucking huge. It's true. Huge. And some of them were tiny. And some of them were tiny, but they all got the brains blown out. That's right. Yep. Good That's stuff. the dream. That's the dream. Uh, <laughs> and all of them. those people are poor as fuck. Like none of them have any money. They all live miserable fucking lives. <laughs> no, they, 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 but they yeah. enjoy what they do. I but they have a TV show. Them. That's right. They're they all live the very short lives. They fucking do this every single day. They wake up at four in the morning. They do this, and when they're forty years old, they look like they're eighty. Um, yeah, I think they were 40. They just looked a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, doesn't it, surprise me. You like it, Ryan. You do look like someone who would appear on the show. So thanks. Wow. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. That's I am 80. These people. You know, is, it, is it a compliment? Is it uh, Gremlin yeah, yeah. Anku has gifted 50 nerdrotic memberships Ooh, for 200. Gremlin. 50. <laughs> nice. Dollars. Whoa. Damn. And then Brock does the same thing. 50 Nerdrotic memberships for 250. Yeah. You guys are insane. Uh yeah, dude. I I didn't want to I talked about it a bunch last night, but on the square up, that's on Nerdrotic Live. Yeah, had a video taken down yesterday. It was uh weird. But God, like weird. what's weirder is it went back up within three hours. I thought it was just gone. It had just hit a million views. It was my last video. Uh, it, it's the end of Woke Hollywood as we know it, and I feel <clears> fine. And um, one of the uh, actors in the uh, in the video that's featured in there didn't like it very much and tried to take the whole thing down um, wow. and succeeded for, for a minute. And I just kind of thought that was it. I, I contacted my YouTube rep and... I was on my way to the gym, and uh, then I found out it was back up, fully monetized, nothing. Like, so we won, but uh, it, yeah, it's it's somebody tried to claim it as their own, and I guess out of abundance of caution, YouTube just believes them. Uh, so you have to counterclaim, yeah. although they tell you not. Like when you counterclaim, they're like, "This could take down your channel." Your channel, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ignore yeah. that shit. If you dare to defend your own channel from people who are sporously trying to destroy it. You could have your channel taken away. That's ridiculous. Thanks, YouTube. So, By the way, we care about your mental health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But don't stop making videos. Otherwise, we'll destroy your channel algorithmically. Thanks, yes. YouTube. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and what sucked is like I took time out of my vacation in the UK to record that in the room you were in, Chad, after you vacated. Yeah. That's where I recorded yeah. it. Um <laughs> until six in the morning and then Perry worked like five days on it. Like it's one of his best editing jobs. And I was like crushed. I was a little fucking pissed. I was like, God damn it. But, uh, Hey, they brought it back. So I hate, you know, things yeah. work, you know, Gary, uh, Ruff, videos... Ruffle Brown put a video. Out. Oh. He did. I was just mm -hmm. about an hour ago. What were you going to say, oh. Shad? And then we'll get to that. Yeah, I was just saying your videos that you record when you're away seem to do really well. You should just move yeah. out and make more yeah. videos. Yeah, uh, live in a hotel. My wife Melissa said uh, we're gonna start just recording videos around the world in hotel rooms. Uh, she's fine <laughs> with that. <laughs> the irony of it all is how much time you spent getting that fucking studio together. So how telling. many hours? How many days? How many weeks did it take to get all that stuff up? And the videos you make in a dog shit fucking little hotel in England do better. <laughs> Dude, I'm still working on the office. It probably won't be done till November. I, and yeah, I'm like, fuck. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. The people have spoken. They have. And it broke my heart. Uh as, oh, so what, as, video. as, as yeah. video, yes. Uh, QBG's just linked it, but uh, like he's just linked yeah. it in the private chat. He put Should out a three-minute video. Should we play it? Uh, I mean... 
It's up to you. I mean, he just I, says that... Uh, he basically says, hey, the UK government's obviously put out all these attacks on me, trying to demonetize me. I don't know too much of what he goes into after that, but... He says, basically, he says that this isn't about um, mainstream media competing with each other. It's now about mainstream media and total collusion with each other to yes. take out independent media because mainstream mm. media... <laughs> Mm. are all in collusion with creating narratives, whether it be through yep. global uh, economies, through through COVID, through environmental. Uh, and he'll be he'll be streaming on Monday on uh, Rumble, and it's the only place that you can get him. He seems visibly, wow. you know, um, he seems a little like he's like, tempered. Yeah, like he's like he's oh, had a few few uh, body blows. Um. Mm. Well, that Which might is well, perfectly understandable. Well, well, oh, oh, oh. let's play it. Screw it. <laughs> let's play it. Well, there's the link. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, ass. Well, I, I, I... <laughs> yep. All three of those a topics of, must bring up are very motion. dangerous topics. The only person <laughs> who talks with his hands more than me is Russell Brand, I think. <clears throat> um, it's it, right. Russell Brand lived a fucking insane life, mm. like self-admittedly. You know, a guy who I think at one point estimated he was having sex with 80 different women a month, like all this shit. And Sounds uh, exhausting. Like, it does sound very tiring. But the <laughs> idea that these allegations come out years after the fact, and I've read the entire thing, I've watched the entire documentary, whatever, and without any criminal, even charges, that he could just be like demonetized from this, demonetized yep. from that it's fucking nuts it's insane mm -hmm. right do, do i think there's a world in which those things against russell brand could be true yeah i do yeah but it like everybody deserves like their chance to be one mm -hmm. in court and actually brought to court no allegation should do this to any single person and there's a lot of things that seem very strange about the allegations as well so uh, this is where we're at in society all it takes is a story all it takes is a news organization that writes something about you and boom, agent drops you. This person mm -hmm. drops you. Comedy tours drop you. You get demonetized on a fucking website. And it, it's just insane. Oh, maybe he'll want a tour with me. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. maybe. Well, we need this. That's why we need more decentralization because then mm -hmm. they can't hold these yeah. things over people like fucking agents. Like fucking agent. Don't, don't oh, get it. Why do you need an agent for at this point? Uh, it, you know, it's, I know some people love them and they, but you know what, it, it, it's just a little extra work on your own. And, uh, I think it's ridiculous to have one, um, and, and, or an agency, especially if we want to like embark and be independent and maybe, you know what, if that's stuff you don't know, learn it, learn it. Don't put your power, don't put any of your power into somebody else right now because they can just use it against you. Yeah. Uh, and we need more smaller independent voices. Like I said. Russell goes, we need a thousand people to replace him somehow, some way. Yeah. We can't like just, all, you know, because there's so many fucking black pillars out there. And that's the worst thing to fight yep. is the black pillars. And, like the, it's bad enough to have our op opponents, but then there's the people within our ranks who just go, oh, fuck it. I'm, you know, everything's done anyway. Why bother? Uh, I why got no vote? time for that shit. Yep. Yeah. Why vote? Yeah. Why do this? Can't, you can't give up the fight, man. And the fact that no. this is being done over allegations. And the guy's not even he's not even charged. There's been no trial, no nothing yeah, over no. media allegations at this point. Ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and it's still I, anonymous, I like all this mm -hmm. shit from years and years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. And and the and the, the people coming after him, I mean, these are the people who courted Epstein for 20 years. These are the people who like the UN, when the UN comes to town, it becomes a sex trafficking mecca. I mean, they fly in prostitutes from all over the country the UN convenes in New York City or wherever it is. I mean, these people yeah. are doing every all that stuff, if not worse. So it's, it's complete hypocrisy. Out and, and in the like, open. Yep. Yeah, out in the open. Yep. Oh, Still I'm no quiet list I, I, I have to leave early. I have a UN thing to do later. Oh. <laughs> okay. I forgot. I'm supposed to let you know oh, I, I, I'm, also, I, I'm also just so tired of some of these allegations basically amounting to you know, I kind of regret it afterwards that I got mm -hmm. pressured into having sex with him. It's like you what you got convinced, like you you consented to do it. You had sex with this person, and afterwards you're like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Come the fuck on. 
take some personal responsibility. Uh, guess what? At some point in time, a lot of us may have had sex with someone that we regret, but in the moment, we yeah. fucking, we wanted it for one reason or another or whatever. And I think there's a lot of women that regret sleeping with me. Yeah. <laughs> it could be yeah. the other way around. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, no, regret. Uh, what Ryan says is right, especially when you're in that the, the Hollywood entertainment world. There's a lot of a lot of women probably slept with him because they thought they could probably get famous, so they used yep. him too. Yep. Uh, yeah, and yeah. What this and yeah. what this hurts, and I, I know this is a, such a basic statement, but it's true: is you're hurting real victims by being uh, a lying cunt, basically. Yeah. So uh, that's why they <clears throat> should be punished too. And yeah, it's a fine line because you want people to be able to come out, right? You you want them. To yeah, be but able to regret is stuff. not an excuse. No, it's not. We we, we live. We we make regrets in every facet of our lives. But, the, but uh, it's, from, it's, from sex to decisions that we make in in real life, the purchases we make, regret is a is a natural thing. You can't then turn that regret if it is regret. But they can. And, and judging by the looks of these the people they who are put this, they can monetize this supposed regret to maybe get some more fame. I mean that's that's what they're doing. It's it's foul. Yeah. It's horrible. What I'm what I'm saying is I'm just fame. sick of it's, that It's shit. infamy. Yeah. It's not fame. It's infamy because who 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 would you even trust in any organization? Somebody that would would turn around and use that as and we've seen it. We've seen it with Amber Heard, bro, and we've seen it with bro, with many the, other people who've done it before. The sociopaths. Uh, will, th there are sociopaths who will who will resort to anything to be famous. I'll I'll, t I'll tell you the story again. I know you've heard it before, as, but maybe the, the channel hasn't. I rented a room when I worked in L.A. from a woman who was getting a foster child to use the money for a documenta documentary film. She went through the process to get a foster child wow. so she would get government money that would help her with her fucking documentary film. These are the kind of scum buckets That's that insane. are regular in disgusting. Hollywood. Yeah. 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 What if the documentary was about adoption? <laughs> uh, well then that would be okay that, that would be it wasn't yeah <laughs> uh, right, i looked up okay. woman are, these this... women are hooking up with russell brand for like you know, to bring him to thanksgiving i mean like no offense to his wife but no one's hooking up with him in the 90s and early aughts for like a guy to settle down Marriage. with it's like you're hooking no. up with him to like kind of get choked on a kitchen counter like you're, <laughs> you're signing up for a weird time. There's yeah. some like graphic descriptions in one and in, in in the reports, absolutely yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, dude, that shit probably happened. And there's probably a lot of willingness on both sides for that. It's mm -hmm. probably a lot of fucking drugs. The guy was high for 16 years straight, yeah. pretty much. And and he's sober now. He's had some kids. And uh he, you know, he deserves his day in court. He also deserves mm -hmm. his redemption arc as long as he didn't do anything like too horrible. You know, uh, and that depends, but it doesn't matter now. As Jeremy said last week, damage, job done. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I just like the, pe people who fucking rape people. That that is like the lowest of the low, like scum of the universe. Right. Yes. Rape it. That's disgusting, horrific act. Fuck you. Cut off your dick. Shoot you in the head. Whatever. Mm -hmm. But the problem is <clears throat> when it's just a sexual interaction that after the fact someone feels either like they're a slut because of it or they kind of regret doing that and then they try to spin everything into well really their friends tell them well really he manipulated you didn't he He had like that power over you and, and you felt like you kind of had to or else this and they're like well i, well, I guess yeah it's that's not being construed as rape and it's it, it's in a lot of ways, in some of these allegations, some of these things, not necessarily all the ones with Russell Brand, but in a lot of these cases, that's what people say. And that's nonsensical. And I, I, I agree. Mind is the same I think thing that's like one of the biggest thing that is basically destroying the agency of women is this. Oh, it was all him and not you. And going back to the whole thing with accountability and responsibility, they don't want it. That's the biggest issue right now with feminism. They don't want, they just want the power. They don't want the accountability or responsibility. Yeah, what, somebody else's problem. That's what it, me too was me too. Times up was used as a giant power shift in, in yeah. Hollywood. A lot. It, it got rid of a lot of people, a lot of executives, a lot of, a lot of executives, a lot of, it didn't get rid of lower middle management. It got rid of actors yeah. and major executives. Uh, who was the guy who preceded Walter Hamada, Ryan at Warner brothers? Um, uh, there's so much changeover. Uh, Toby Emmerich? 
No, no. Toby Emmerich was after him. It was uh, it was another Asian something? guy. It was another Asian guy. Okay. But what he did was he slept with an actress. So Jar Jar Abrams' wife said Jar Jar will not come over and sign that deal unless you get rid of him. And she was she's on the Me Too Times Up board, by the way. So she forced that guy out because he had sex with a freaking actress. Wow. Which is a day that ends in Y in fucking Hollywood. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. they, they got rid of that, and all of a sudden, J.J. Jar Jar gets this huge fucking deal, which, he, by the way, just got canceled because he didn't produce anything, but he did get the money. He did get the good, money. Good, good for him. You fucking scammed him. <laughs> Shit. Um, so th it, it, that, that, and that's just one example. Um, you know, Rose McGowan used to be a big part of the Me Too Times Up thing, and she, mm -hmm. she, she, you know, has has flipped on it big time, and and, mm -hmm. and saw yeah. saw it for what it was, and good for her, by the way, for that. Uh, and I'm sure you know she was passed around Hollywood a little bit, a lot, maybe really a lot, but uh, probably a lot. You know the the. Y we thought this shit was over and it's just going to continue as long as we have what Russell said, this coordinated, coordinated <laughs> effort from, but by the way, collusion is against the law. You can't collude. That's something you, <laughs> how could it be against the law when the law's in collusion with you? Yeah. Good question. I fought the law and the law <laughs> one. I mean, well, Carl Benjamin is, has been pointing out how the, um, act of that, um, uh, I don't know, whoever was did it from the British Parliament, that <laughs> that broke the law of the Magna Carta. One of the few things the letter, that was still yeah. in place in Magna Carta was uh, completely broken by that letter, and so has been calling for her resignation, and rightly so, honestly. Magna Carta. Yeah, what was her name? Caroline Dinich. Yeah, 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 yeah. I Is guess it possible she's they kind didn't of in trouble know about now, that? She didn't, she didn't clear the letter with her own committee. She's a part of the, she's a chair of the culture, media, and sports committee in parliament. Oh, yeah. And apparently she just sent that letter unilaterally, maybe not unilaterally, maybe like in collusion with some big media corporations, but she didn't clear it with the rest of the members of parliament. And so she's a little bit in hot water over that. I think that's Good. interesting. They'll write her yeah. a very serious letter. You can, yeah, yeah no, she'll be a, a, a very firm slap on the wrist. Yeah, yeah she's her phone number and email are on the member of par are, are on the parliament website if you want to contact her. Uh, and give her not my type. <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, you're, well, you're not drinking anymore, as so yeah, <laughs> it kind of takes away the. Fun I can't even beer goggles it. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm sure that'll be a massive uh, episode on Rumble on Monday. Uh, and, and again, good good for Rumble for for standing up, but that's going to put a giant target on their back. So massive balls and yeah. uh, respect, yeah. respect. Mm -hmm. uh, Tomat Tomok for fifty dollars. <throat> did did he notice that Jeremy wasn't here? Like I even noticed Jeremy wasn't here. I mean, I just noticed Chrissy was here about five minutes. I was going to say for Chrissy. Aww. Oh, Chrissy, I'm sorry. All right. I'll just talk more. Just kidding. Nobody wants that. Yeah, you're a woman. <laughs> Stop. Uh, Jeremy, so I see you have a few people that want you to play Yakuza. My only question is, have you uh, let the light of Majima into your heart? Codes on Twitter. What did I just read? Uh, it's a video a game. game thing, obviously, dude. Come on. Yeah. yeah, you're you the king know, of video games. Gamer. You know yeah. what? If I haven't heard of it, then it's not a video game because I am <laughs> I am a gamer. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. not sure what I'm more of an expert in now. I'm not sure if I'm more of a weeb or a gamer, but uh, you know, you guys decide out there. Um, hotel videos. <clears throat> hotel videos. You know, I, I, when I go to the hotel, when I'm by myself and I bring in all the camera equipment, I just, uh, I'm like, people are going to think I'm They think I'm you're a Vegas shooter. Making porn. <laughs> Making porn. <laughs> yeah, li luckily, I heard they won't look into you at all. It'll be okay. So. <laughs> uh, Ryan. We, we, uh, we get fucking better footage of goddamn Lauren Boebert getting felt up than what? we do of like any of this other crazy shit. January 6th. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, 50 euros from proper Ryan over there in Europe. Thank you, proper Ryan. Does the sound of Grace Randolph's voice make anyone else want to drive their car into a brick wall? Vader? <laughs> yeah. He Vader! Yes, as long as the brick wall is off the edge of the cliff at the bottom. Yes. 
Uh, what in the hell? <clears throat> Damn it. I'm okay. I'm not choking. What in the hell is that crazy, lazy-eyed person me. talking about now? I swear someone left the door open at an insane asylum somewhere. I think the bleach has just uh, gotten into her head. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's fingering. Hey, Chrissy, you made uh, Grizzy's video twice. Um, uh, someone mm. sent something to me. I haven't watched it yet. I wonder if that's what it's you're so referring funny. to. Well, your Grace Randolph impression is pretty spot on. We need to bring that back. Was it favorable or unfavorable? Very favorable. Favorable. Oh. Very favorable. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Ministry of Wrong Thing for forty nine ninety nine. <laughs> so after getting friend zoned. Sabine helps the bad guys threaten the entire galaxy by traveling across an intergalactic void just so she can give mixed signals to Zohan Solo. <laughs> I take it all back. <laughs> Zohan Solo. <laughs> Uber Geek had a good one. They basically called him like Space Aladdin. Yeah. No, <laughs> that is not original. My video. <laughs> space, space Aladdin was what people were calling him before the first fucking episode came out. Yep, because as funny. soon as they pulled it out there, he had like the hair, like he just, he had the skin color. He looked like Space Aladdin. Yeah. And then space the Aladdin. opening sequence in Rebels is him literally in a market, like stealing food to eat oh. uh, with like stormtroopers <laughs> chasing him down. I forgot about that. I completely <laughs> forgot about that. There, there, somebody did a mass uh, a mashup with uh, one jump ahead of the lawman. Like they did that with the uh, opening scene <laughs> of Rebels and it works perfect. Does he have purple cool. eyes? Is it purple eyes? Blue. It's blue. blue. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot and of blue. I think those are contacts because I, I imagine that actor has brown eyes. I, I was um, going to say there's I was a lot surprised of well, because his eyes are very blue in in the com or in the hmm. in the show. Is yeah. Rosario well, Dawson has blue eyes in the show as well? I don't know if she. I don't think she naturally has. There's a lot of blue eye appropriation going on in Ahsoka. I just want to point that out. Mm -hmm. Well, I like that. I I, I, I I like that attention to detail and the fact that they do that. You know, I wish there was a little bit more for a lot of other things. But uh, I you mean like attention the fact to that detail, about... like to the directing, the acting, the catering. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I like the fact that they do yeah. care about those things. Yeah. Like, I hate the fact that Daniel Radcliffe didn't have the right color eyes in Harry Potter. Like, yeah. It might not seem like a big deal. You oh, know, great no, movies no, no. It, it shows, shows you care. It's a massive deal. It's it a shows you care. because he didn't care. It's because he had a bad reaction to the contacts. Oh, and It was gotcha. going to be too expensive gotcha. to CGI and shit well, like that. But Daenerys, I would have loved to see in Game of Thrones. Daenerys should have had purple eyes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, like that, it's well, a very important thing, especially when determining lineage. And sometimes, like, uh, when you meet, uh, like, Dark Star or something, and you wonder about, like... They describe his eyes. You start to think, what does that mean in terms of the Danes and their heritage? And where they, that's very important in a lot of the world Dude, building for these. I shows. love the character of Dark Star, by the way. Great character. <laughs> this fucking little edgy boy. Yeah. Little edge boy. Uh, uh, I well, take it all back. Sabine is Disney's most accurate female ever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what were you going to say, Shannon? I was just wanting to hear you sing the entire song. The Aladdin song. You, you started. Uh, oh, and gotta stay pr proud of your boy. One jump ahead of the long <laughs> man. One skip, and that's no joke. These guys just can't appreciate I'm broke. Like that's actually. Like, gay. How are you not on Broadway? I'm not gay enough. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You just sang a song from Aladdin yeah. pretty accurately. <laughs> <laughs> I loved Aladdin growing up. That's one of my favorite Disney movies. I it's love one of the better ones. Oh, that what's, Lion is, King is very my, good. What's, my ones on repeat. What's Proud of Lion Your Boy King, from man. again? Is that from Aladdin? Her Aladdin. Hercules. Okay. Hercules. Proud of, your proud of Your Boy. Aladdin. Where That's from that gay porno you watched, Gary. Oh, well, I watched Aladdin? it on your computer. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it was in his collection. So. Project Egg Roll for How 50. did that get in there? Oh, oh, hello. Love everyone on the panel discussing how YouTube copyright claim system works. You have the egg support, and we love you long time. We love you too, long time. Long time. Except for x ray girls. She'll only love you short time. <laughs> it, it really depends on the size, so. You're a size wow. queen. What a size queen. <laughs> ah, so this it is from Aladdin, but it was not in the movie. Ah, it was on the Broadway stage on musical the Broadway, adaptation. Okay. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. It's where the Proud Boys came from. That song, because Aladdin's mom got completely written out of the movie. Well, that's probably okay. understandable. Uh, yeah, Trey fuck Mi women, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, Trey Miller for fifty dollars fifty. Last week on Chad. Uh, 
Last week, one of Shad's guys gave Ahsoka Episode 5 a review of 8 out of 10. Dude, love those member berries. Shad, you might want to restrict these kids' access to your channel when you are out <laughs> of the country. Just saying. Ah, oh, nah. Hey, no, they're good blokes. They, they love Star Wars. And so, you know. Which is even more confusing. <laughs> that is a bit confusing. Uh, Xena. Xenaximus. Xenax. Where do you get Zena? It's Zimus. Xena Zimus. Xenaximus? Is it all Xenaximus? You thinking straight. about the Roman Empire again? I am. <laughs> <clears throat> Biggest dickest. Uh. <laughs> Biggest, biggest, uh, biggest, 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 <laughs> buttocks. Oh, God. Uh, this is two parts for $50. So, Maxius. Gary, it's been fun watching you become a bit of a One Piece fanboy. I'm uh, for the live action, for the LA, as everybody's calling it. Took me a while to figure out what LA meant. <laughs> Los Angeles. Uh, yes, I am, I am a major fanboy of the series. I don't give a shit. Uh, Oda's characterization and world building has always been top notch. I agree. His main inspirations for it were Vicky the Viking, the Dragon Ball series, and the Wizard of Oz. Uh, well. And even though he was inspired by Oz, he actually hates the idea of the real treasure was the adventure itself. Uh, I kind of hate that idea, too. He thinks that's stupid. He wants the treasure to be real and more than worth just the adventure. Hope he pulls it off. Yeah, it would be interesting to see what the one piece is. Uh, yeah, I went from, like, uh, I think, Shad, we were talking about 8 out of 10 at the point we were watching it. I'm at I'm at 10 out of 10. <laughs> really? Yep. Yeah. I need to finish it to, to see where I'm at with it, so... Well, watch it uh, all over. Uh, let's see. I downloaded it on my phone, so I watched it on the entire played ride. Then I'm like, oh, I got to watch it in my home theater with my kid. And then I watched him, you know, I watched it with you guys a bunch. I finished it after you walked out of the room. I'm like, I'm watching the next episode. Yeah. <laughs> I was supposed to record a video. I'm like, fuck that. I'm watching this. Uh, is, this some, is this something you can watch with your kids? I was thinking about watching it yes. with my boys. They're 10. 10 years old? Yes. Good for them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's like nice. a couple of uh, like violent parts but it's it's fine they 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 make it pretty cartoony there's one that's kind of serious but it's it's fine it's not like uh uber gory uh there's a lot of great messaging in it uh, a lot nice. of a lot of uh male mentoring that you just don't see anymore oh, yeah uh yeah. so that's refreshing yeah it's 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 a fun show like i think i'm gonna start I this point out I, I want to point out one of those messaging, right? And so Luffy's role model, the other pirate captain guy, Shanks. actually, yeah, I like he shows that he's willing to endure abuse and everything to avoid violence. Mm -hmm. But when it comes mm -hmm. to abusing his friends, you know, it's like, no, no, I'll, you can abuse me, but we'll you get don't busy. abuse my friends. And uh, and I just like that. simple things like that that show simple masculine virtues of protecting others, but also showing that you should try and avoid violence at all costs and not having such a fragile ego. That, I, I, that's a brilliant, you know, character model uh, and an example in the show that deserves credit. So I'm just pointing that out because so it was good to see. Yeah, pointing out life isn't fair and not every system's going to be perfect. You know what Garp does <coughs> with Kobe? I love that sit-down talk. Uh, and, and he just all life isn't fair. And there's, there's just things we have to learn. What can you live with and what you can't, what can't you, in other words, choose your battles, choose your battles. Mm -hmm. That's because life is going to be complicated. It's not all just black and white. Uh, and of course the scene that everybody talks about is a girl can beat a boy, but a, a woman can never beat a man. Uh, <laughs> And we were watching that together, and we just we were went, just like, "What?" And we had to rewind it and hear it again. <laughs> yeah. And it's because you're bigger and you're stronger, and stronger. it's just nature. It's just nature. Mm -hmm. And the girl's frustrated. And the best follow up to that is Zoro saying, "I don't want to hear your excuses." Yeah, that's nature. Yeah. That's basically that's it. But you're using that as an excuse to give up. Mm -hmm. Hell no. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah. "Hell no." I'll it, well, I'll train with you. And uh, like everything about that was. Freaking great. It was, yeah, it's very well done. Yep. Yeah. Great. And uh, you don't, you know, like, it's so rare in modern media today that that's like, we, we, that's why we reacted so strongly when we heard it. We were just like, what? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> that's not allowed in current year. <laughs> no. And the main character, Luffy, is just like so positive all mm -hmm. the time. Yes. 
and yes. it's kind of infectious. It's like really nice to see. It's it, the, the show's anti nihilism. I mean, it's yeah. just straight up. It's it's a, it's a good casting. One hundred percent. It's a happy show in a in a very fantastical world with people with hats that say marine on it, and they talk to each other on snails, <laughs> and there's and they have converse and electricity and modern clothing, but it's still like pirate world, and it all works somehow. Yeah. It all works. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jesus Davilia has gifted 10 neurotic memberships for $50. Oh, oh my hell God. Oh, yeah. Hell wow. yeah. He did not have shown this to Gary. Is that a Kia pet? <laughs> He's got oh so many souls. I told you, Gary. You son of a bitch. Um, I've got a bunch of One Piece uh, toys already that were sent to me, but from Japan. That looks great. <laughs> I want Mihawk, man. That's fucking. That's such a great character. Uh, and his big ass sword. I oh. love, when he pulls it on Zoro, it, it, it and you're listening on a good sound system. It the, the thing sounds heavy. It goes and your your subwoofer just goes. When he pulls oh. the sword, it's right. I, I think like, it, was, oh. it was funny as hell when he was fighting with the little sword. That was that was yeah. funny. Oh, well, like, he's, the little, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the yeah the little. I'm trying to understand something because his introduction was just friggin' awesome, right? and it's just, and it's just there wrecking people, right? Just, and I'm oh, trying yeah. to figure out why is that so much better than Sabine's introduction in Ahsoka, where they try to do the same thing, where she's so awesome, guys, um, but they just don't pull it off. Is it because she comes off conceited and full of herself? Yep. And yes. And in in one piece, women can't do gravitas. Like men can. Uh, no, true. they can't. It's true. <laughs> Wasn't he to be fair, that is Sabine's character in the cartoon as well? Yes. <laughs> yeah, me, well, yeah, she's a miserable cow in that as well. Right. Um, <laughs> but in uh, she was, she was, she was just a miserable no, cow right, in rebels. Right. I didn't I didn't like her at all. She, she like she's really good at everything. She's a snarky fucking cunt. Like she is an annoying character. And wasn't that dude she has in, uh, in One Piece? The guy in One Piece wasn't he actually in the opening scene when the pirate was getting executed, and he's actually in the uh, crowd. Is he? I didn't notice that. As a younger, as a younger man, I, oh, I thought. I thought. It, I don't know if it's the guy who. No, he no, had no, the same yeah, no. You're right. I, I think in the beginning there, there's a younger version of Mihawk and Shanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Mihawk. Mihawk. I don't. Know, I don't know how. To but say this. anyway, just seeing giant sword wielded, like it just looks so ba badass. And it dude, I want that sword. Like. I want that sword like the, in this room. <laughs> I was not prepared that that they sold it because the sword looks more goofy in the animation, but they they pulled it off to make it live action, and it just looked wicked. It's just oh. yeah. Uh, we got uh, B Chain three one five for one hundred dollars. <laughs> this hail Friday night type Shad. Your video on masculinity was fantastic and is the an inspiration. Uh, not to myself, but most of society needs to take to heart. All of you guys and gals here may not be perfect. No one is. But your honesty, humility, and dedication is what sets you apart. Dude, that's... Thank you. Thank you. Wow. So he's, uh, he's talking about the... Uh... Yeah, he's talking about the video I put out on Night's Watch uh, just before uh, FNT launched. And, oh, and oh, yeah, man. it's just a positive message that I think, uh, you know, young guys, they, they need to hear stuff like that. And, and so I'm really good at humility. So thank you for acknowledging <laughs> how good I am. At <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad you're doing that, Shad. I hope you do it more. Uh, I because I mean, as we see in, in the whole manosphere thing, there is a, a void when it comes to young men and yes. uh, the kind of advice. And, and I'd like to see more data sphere stuff That's uh, right. than manosphere That's right. stuff. Well, I mean, like all, all women are just going to trick you and fuck you over, and all women are fucking dog shit. Marriage like, is, I, I, marriage oh is stupid. Yeah, marriage is yeah. Stupid. Yeah. It's you have to. All and, are just and, and, the top one percent of men, and mm -hmm. you have to become a top one percent of man. Otherwise, you will never fuck. Um, which for yeah. most people that are watching those channels is a very unrealistic goal. Not a very yeah, realistic and. Goal. Uh, 
you're right. That like it's that type of advice that's been honestly pissing me off because it is yeah. awful advice. Yeah. And the thing that I was wanting to address in that is, is actually to try and push back against that same type of sentiment where they're trying to push this idea of what a strong man is, and they're just yeah. pushing like vanity and, and stupid crap about just getting they're in pushing themselves. They're just salesmen. They're, they're not yeah. teaching anyone anything. They're right. salesmen. They are snake oil salesmen. If if you need to be taught how to be a man, you're lost anyway. You can't be None taught how to be a fucking man. Life is going to teach you how to be a fucking man. What the the adversity that you go through, the the events which you go through, nobody's going to teach you to go on a fucking course. Go on a course, yeah. and I'll teach you how to smash puss. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah I, I, I agree with money. that in terms of yeah, you join my fucking fifty dollar a month thing, and I'll teach you the secret. Yeah, I agree with that. But I do think that there are you know people that have had an absence of a positive real, um, a positive male role model in yeah. their lives that are looking yeah. for answers. That's obvious. That is yes. obvious that that's out there because of how much some of the content takes off. Um, I think for the most part. Uh, not not everybody in the manosphere is this way. But, uh, I think a large portion of the red pill community, though, I think in the next six to 12 months, they're going to be spouting very different things because I think the, the well is going to run dry on that. It's going to turn into something else because I think a lot of them are That's snake well. oil salesmen, like you said. Yeah. I would love to see. Well, I mean, you got to there. There is. I, I don't know how many of you had kids go through public school, but there's definitely an effort to de-emphasize uh, male mentorship, masculinity. Mm, yes. That's going. That's, <clears throat> we've seen it through Hollywood. We're also seeing it in public school systems, and that's creating this void. So they and and there's a lot of kids out there who don't have dads, you know, because dad took off, and that's fucked up. Yeah, and we need to teach. Uh, more people that stay home. Dad needs to stay home. You know, uh, we we put a lot of. Uh, a lot of this shit on single mothers, but what they're single mothers because the dad took off. Is it yeah. you know, whose fault is it? Doesn't really fucking matter in the end when the dad's gone, right? Yeah, so, I, I see. I see a lot of the like this this in this man woman divide. Any anytime I speak about it online, instantly in the comments, I get a lot of women like going ah about the men, and I get a lot of men going ah about the uh, women. And my mm -hmm. my whole point with this whole thing is that okay, as a man, men take responsibility. You know, um, mm. and the, the thing that's going to kind of resolve a lot of this stuff is is to have men owning up to what our crap is and and and, and fixing that before we go pointing our fingers. Um, and and that's how you reconcile things. Um, but but right now there's just too much finger pointing. It drives me nuts. Yep. Absolutely, it, and since so the victim behavior, yes, saying it's your fault, it's your fault. Absolutely. Yeah, well, we've cultivated this victim culture, yeah, and yeah. It, it, yeah. it's pervasive through everything now. Like there, there's some, obviously there's some things that are said in those communities that are mm -hmm. of course positive. Yeah. Get yourself in good shape. Yep. Make sure you have professional and personal drive. Uh, you know, all mm -hmm. these things are, are very positive things and things that all people should do, but that is just basic advice and knowledge that doesn't necessarily come with what I feel like is the victimhood nature of, oh, well, you know, you're just going to get screwed. All these women are going to screw you over because they're just looking for this, this, and this. Um, and I think it's resulted in a decrease in masculine men, um, mm -hmm. especially when some of the biggest purveyors of that type of content are actually the ones running these fucking OnlyFans porn sites and that are admitting to and laughing to stealing money from weak men that they're supposedly out to save. And now yeah. they're promoting like get a vasectomy as soon as you can. That oh. may not even that's be That's some, that's some like pearl. Pearl's fucking retarded, and it's all from this like one <laughs> thing that Rolo put out that was a really dumb tweet that he got destroyed for about the vasectomy thing. Yeah, it's it's, it's mm. fucking insane. No, don't have a vasectomy when don't you're 21 years don't mess old. Mess up your dick and balls. Just, just wrap it up, okay? <laughs> if, you, if you're having problem meeting just, people, if you're having just problem wait till marriage. I'm the I'm the Christian guy here. I'm yeah. like, Aww. just wait till marriage. That's <laughs> hey, hey, oh, Joel, these, Joel, these, these, Joel. These people, these people are looking <laughs> looking in these areas though. Hard. They need. They're the people in the nicest ways that do need to get off the internet. The, you are the <laughs> they are the people that need to start living in reality and getting out there and. And physically meeting people, because because yeah. just being on the internet and looking at these 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 fucking fake ass snake oil salesmen to try and tell you how to live your life is going to get you nowhere. You're going to start taking some leaps of faith yourself and getting yourself out there. I mean, I mean, learn, Gary and I are Shad, no, not even Shad, but Gary and I are fucking old enough to know. 
uh, we've lived in a, in a time before the internet. Uh, so all you had was to go out and meet people. All you had mm -hmm. was to, after school, to be out there and socialize with people. And, and then through socialization, you learn various uh, lessons in life. You learn that you can't always get your own way. You learn mm -hmm. sometimes to how to negotiate with people. You learn sometimes the word no means fucking no, regardless of what context it's in. And sometimes you can find a way to, to, to compromise. But those are skills which can only be, be developed with physical people there. You're not going to develop these on the internet because the internet is a microcosm of, of life. It's not what life actually is. And that's why there are so many uh, arguments on social media because social media is designed to make you argue. It's designed yeah. to crush nuanced conversation. It's designed to crush true development of relationships and socializations with people. That's its nature because all it's into is, is, is getting quick clicks, getting quick clicks and getting interactions. That's all it's designed to do. It's not designed to enhance you. It's not developed to enhance you. It's not designed to, to craft you into a human being or a man or a woman. It's designed to, to, to waste your fucking time. It's designed to sap you into a world which doesn't fucking exist with other people who don't exist in this fucking world. So if you want some advice and it's fucking free, turn it off. Turn it off. Go out there. Go to your local library. Go to a local sports club. Go to somewhere that is a social fucking venue where you can actually interact with people. Go to a comic shop. Talk to people there. Go, go somewhere. Go to the cinema. Take a friend. Fine, but do something out in the fucking world where you're communicating. Stop before, letting these people I mean, run riot. Keep, keep yeah, watching well, this show. Keep watching this show, but then go out. But, but yeah. Yeah. Before, <laughs> before anyone tries to, you know, say something retarded like that, oh, why don't you do that, As He is doing that. Have you not seen what As has been doing? He's yeah. been getting out there. Yeah. And, I've been doing it all my what, life. You just yeah, see yeah, me that's here. Good. That's the only time you see me. You don't see me outside in the world. You don't yeah. see me with my IRL friends who you don't, who I don't put onto the fucking screen. You don't see me go to the cinema. You don't see me go to the gym. You don't see me go for my walks. You don't see me out and about. The only time that you see me is here. So the people that want to say that kind of stuff, you again, you're just wasting your own fucking time. I've had a life. I, I'm, I'm an old bastard. I've had a life and I've lived a life and I'm still living a fucking life. Mm -hmm. And I know how to. I know how to bridge the gap between online. I know how to bridge the gap between reality. It's the people who are stuck having issues with that. It's the people who are stuck online looking to these snake oil salesmen to tell them how to be and exist. And that's not what you want. The only way you're ever going to do that is to go out yourself. Yeah, and that, that's yeah, such into a the key aqueducts. Thing. Um, just and the in aqueducts and the Roman Empire and all. Well, and I understand motivation is a very difficult thing, but you need to find something that motivates you because if not, you're going to be sitting on your ass. Yeah. yeah. Um, just mm. what you were saying before, Joel. Yeah, you're not alone in terms of waiting for marriage. I did the exact same thing, and uh, I'm very glad that I did. They finally so. legalized gay marriage. Hey. 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 Um, well, I, I mean, I, I didn't waste any time before I got married. I, I have five yeah. kids already. So, oi, oi, um... Joel, Joel, me, <laughs> me too, brother. Me too. Five. Is this a bad time to bring up ha having a good pullout game? A little late. <laughs> um, I haven't figured, I haven't read that All book right. yet. Okay. No, no, All you right. got five kids. What, what, like, what, what does that mean, Gary? Um, <laughs> Never mind, Shad. It's too late for you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Uh, Garrett says that was the message at the beginning of One Piece, not the pullout game, but uh, I can't remember. <laughs> um, but hi, Garrett, how's it going? We miss you. Uh, Mark of Reality for $50 says Ryan's cancel cancellation was stopped. This is true. Ryan's cancellation was stopped by Az's rant. His cancellation was stopped by the fellowship. Then Cecil and Camelot were booted off. Uh, of most social media, mm -hmm. uh, probably for being really gay. Uh, now they're uh, trying to frame Russell Brand. Could you interview Russell Brand or give him get him on? I would love to give him on. I mean, I'm sure everybody wants to talk to him, but uh, Russell, you're welcome on the show. I'll we can try to reach out, but we'll probably get. But I'll talk to him. Absolutely. Um, 
No, it was Chrissy g- was getting canceled by, I think, Israel and then Malaysia, or both at the same <laughs> time. Not yeah. really sure. She pissed yeah. off entire countries. And then... Uh, That's I, impressive, by the way. I got into a little trouble uh, over the Taco About It thing, over a thumbnail, but then they saw what Ryan said, so they all went after Ryan, uh, and that... Then they saw, yeah, then they saw, like, a different video of mine, and it's like, <laughs> hey... We just found this out. There's a video circulating of you making a joke, a joke about a patron saint. Um, and, <laughs> and it's like, we're going to expose you. And I'm like, it's a live stream I did on my channel, but go it's for like, it. Bitch, where like, were you a year ago? <laughs> yeah, I was like, congratulations. How, fucking how late, late you have lazy. A really representing saint. Mexico very well. Um, but yeah, it didn't go didn't go so great for well, them. Who was, uh, who was the surprise? Supreme Court justice who was basically dead in office for a while. What was her Ruth name? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah. Remember when you joked about her being dead and people got mad about that? So nothing. <laughs> so, so long ago, too. It, that was when uh, <laughs> it was when the news actually broke. Yeah. It was, we were doing Friday Night Tights <laughs> when the news <laughs> broke that Ruth Bader Ginsburg was dead. And somebody said it and it just got really quiet. And I said, <laughs> Again, <laughs> like, <laughs> because of you know, it just felt like she was kind of dead for a while. And people were covered, like, and, and people got mad at that. I'm like, that was just like a genuine funny, funny reaction. I thought, <laughs> uh, Grendel Vivat on the Streamlab side for $100 circumventing Papa Susan. Strike, what strike? Congratulations, Gary, on getting the bullshit shut down. Also, as did you see Weta Workshop announced that they're making one in six figures of Warhammer 40K and fantasy? Are you ready? Is your wallet? No. Yeah. It's not ready. I'm not ready. It's going to have to be. I think they're also making, I don't know if it's Weta or Prime One, but they're making a whole new round of one in three Witcher statues oh, from yeah. the game, as, not from as house. Yes. House. House. Yeah. Yep. It's okay because. I got the house, but then I got food. Not too bothered about the food at the minute. So you're getting one six scale instead of food. I'm okay with yes. that. Yes. I'm okay with yeah. that. I think that's good. Uh, Matthew Hammond on the Streamlab side for $45. Eat candy corn with a handful of salted dry roasted peanuts, and you get the ultimate candy bar, a payday. It beats all the <laughs> inferior candy bars known in those pictures. That sounds good. Paydays good. So, pay, paydays right, are listen, good. But that's caramel. Paydays, paydays are fine. But nobody's going to grab a fucking... If you have a choice, of no one's grabbing a payday. Uh, dude, I love payday. Are you kidding me? You're fucking oh, old and weird, bro. Is this like, like an American thing? Is, is, so it's caramel. It's not wax. Wrong. Come on. It's, it's, it's caramel. Caramel. No, but caramel. if you have... Caramel, 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 whatever. If you have... Reese's, if you have Twix, Snickers, Three Musketeers, well, milk, if you have all this shit, so, I don't believe cat. that a normal person is going to grab a no, payday. No, I'm not going to, like, that. Reese's is top tier, best okay. thing ever, especially when put in the freezer for uh, at least 45 oh, yeah. minutes, okay? Yeah. Like, that is the best Hell thing yeah. Ever. At least fridge, yeah. Mm. At least, nah, freezer. They're, I mean, they're average. If, if you if you're poor and Shut you don't the have fuck it. up, you Aussie <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> average. Your candy. Oh is yeah, yeah. No, I remember some rule. stupid oi, Reese's oi, Australian commercial where a guy a goes, jam, okay? guys, this is how we do it in Australia," and he takes a bite out of it. He's like, "Eat some now." And it's like a boomerang. And he goes, "Save the rest for later." And he throws it around. It fucking comes back to him, and he eats it. You remember that? I remember no, that. Australia is supposed to fucking love Reese's peanut butter cups. No, we're not. We got <laughs> <laughs> find that commercial. It was a good commercial. Hey. Eat some now. Ve- Vegemite is X-ray go. X-ray go. Tell everyone what do you think of it? I'll tell you what. Uh, no, no, I'll speak for her. Her, her words are up. Uh, it's it's <laughs> <laughs> it's beetles and shit. Crushed together into a jar. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, yeah. And you can't yeah, tell me. Cool. Nobody could tell me with a straight face, even in that video. I'm like, is this something you're going to go like to a restaurant and order over, I don't know, jam on a, or, or butter and jam on a cracker or something? No, none of you are going to yes, go and, oh. and, and have this over anything. Okay. So just because you didn't puke on it. All right. No, can, they loved you can it. Speak and now, I got X-ray video girl. footage to prove it. You treacherous. <laughs> go ahead, X-ray girl. Just tell them how much you loved Vegemite. It, it, it's like the 
Australian soy sauce, and it was good. Oh, <laughs> oh that's right. She this is why you only get nine no, words. But on crumpets, no, it was words. nasty. Enough she, words. She voted for Trudeau. So, yeah, <laughs> that explains everything. He was like pretty, so I he's voted so for him. I just Fuck. like, he was so like cute and everything. Oh my god, he totally That's why looks women like, don't. We're in North America, you're not allowed to vote here. He looks like for a Gavin Newsom. Fidel Castro. I totally voted for him. Oh my god. <laughs> I have it to show It's a very attractive hit. You know, I reckon Ryan would like Vegemite if I made it. For He's him. a really cute dictator. I would oh try God. it. How Mick go. Burke eats a Reese's. Let's really? go. Mick Burke eats a Reese's peanut butter cup. Good eye. Oh, I eat a little bit now. <laughs> I'll come back for the rest later. There's no wrong way Beauty. to eat a Reese's. That's right. Mm, that's good. That's right, They're Chad. Active. You're a you're fucking They're abandoning average. your countrymen if you say that Reese is mid. That's right. <laughs> mid, fuck? very mid. Oh, uh, this off, buddy. This uh, off. Tim Tams. Tim Tams. What candy do you like? like? Uh, the shapes are good. What he likes? Shapes. Shapes are great. Well, the Tim Tams. The, those are the caramel ones. Tim Tams. No, Tim Tams with the chocolate Tim-tams. biscuits. <laughs> those were. Yeah, those are good. The corny bite the yeah, corners. You put like coffee through it. Uh, and then eat it. Matt Peters, two parts for ninety dollars. Thank you, Matt. I wanted to give my brother a shout out. He showed me FNT, and I never got to thank him. He and his oh. wife have been struggling to have a kid after he got out of the army and discovered that his balls didn't work. Oh, well, that's. Oh that's, no. What's even worse is his brother just told the world. <laughs> 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 don't worry it's only I like I don't know. it's only a happy like ending 11,000 people or so it's only a few hundred people <laughs> they are now in Florida certified to adopt that's good adoption's good okay. I'm adopting yes. and a few months away from adopting a baby so I started an adopt together fund to help them with the remaining legal fees they need and wanted to share it uh, to the fellowship, if anyone is interested, uh, yeah, shoot me an email or DM X Ray Girl and stuff. We could put it on Twitter or something. Sure, absolutely. Adoption's a great option, by the way, uh, for for little babies. Uh, if you can't take care of the baby for whatever circumstances, adoption is good. It's possible. I think it's better than any alternative. I'm sure glad I was adopted. And not like aborted in a alleyway or something. I don't think it was legal when yeah. I was born, but like they didn't have fire when I was born, so I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, Buddy Rabbit for eighty dollars on the Streamlab side. Uh, the only thing worse than Ahsoka are the shill reactions. This is peak Star Wars. The Han, Luke, and Leia versus Thrawn plot completely missed them. Uh, this is the best thing they've seen for Star Wars. Read the EU. We did this better years ago. Ten bucks ahead. Hail FN2. <laughs> uh, Ryan will not disagree with you. The EU is, uh, I haven't read as much as Ryan. I've like a, you know, minute portion compared to Ryan, but uh, I enjoyed what I read quite a bit. I was a big fan of the Dark Horse comics. Thought this, yeah, a lot of those, those were, were really, very good. really, really good. Mm-hmm. Especially the early ones. Uh, Quelndar. Quelndar has donated $50 on the Streamlabs side and said nothing. Just kind of oh. dropped the 50 and left. Thank you. 50. Logan, my son, for $50 on the Streamlabs side. He's just spending, he's spending my money. Oh. At least it's going back to you. Yeah. It's recycling. Some it's of just, for the, just for the huge cut taken out from you. Yep. <laughs> Money laundering. Uh, hey, Dad, I just got a job ghostwriting for Bill Ma- Marr. Uh, my fake name is Winston Smith. I'm not supposed to cross the picket line. I could be interrogated. I told them my biggest fear wasn't rats, but redheaded women with big breasts. By the way, hi, Chrissy. Hey, Elephant. <laughs> 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 I work with Chrissy. That is inappropriate. Inappropriate, untoward. Yeah. How did we get to say that? <laughs> uh, Epic right. Fantasy has dropped uh, fifty Australian dollars, <laughs> and that's it. Just dropped it. Just dropped it. You know what? I bet you he likes Reese's. I think Epic Fantasy likes Reese's. I don't think he does. They're, they're, they're... <laughs> 
<laughs> we don't care too much about him. That that vid, that like advertising was false advertising. It don't don't weird. hate Shad. Don't hate. It's on the coming. You know. <laughs> Shad, you know I love you, but I'm gonna have to disassociate myself and write a super gay blog on Twitter about how we can't be friends anymore because you don't like Reese's. <laughs> I won't be... cross swords with you anymore, Shad. <laughs> yeah, that would be super gay. I do it. Something like that would be really, really lame and cowardly and gay. I no, he's a coward. Punk ass bitch. Uh, mm -hmm. cheesy, cheesy Terrian, a cheesy Terrian for fifty dollars. Thank you, fifty. Today is my birthday. Thanks for the entertainment. Happy birthday to you. We won't sing. Last time we did that, I lost like a thousand subscribers. So. Uh, oh no. No. Nah. Did you post a video about the Last of Us part two? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, it, okay, you said a video as. Let's be real. I know, uh, tw all right, 26 videos then, maybe. 26 <laughs> videos on. So, uh, Joel, to give you context, on uh, April Fool's Day, as decided to release all of his Last of Us 2 streams all at once. <laughs> uh, Your subscription fee is just all as. And it fucked It's not baby. just that, it, it fucks up the algorithm. So, all you get recommended is the Last of Us Part 2 videos. <laughs> Oh, uh, no. uh, I'm, uh, I, uh, <laughs> Did it help you or hurt you? Oh, oh. I, lost, I lost a few, few, few subscribers that day. <laughs> so then you're saying the joke was on you then? Yeah. Um, no, because uh, they all came back. They all came back. Uh, they all came uh, back. Well, your channel just got going again, like when you went viral. You, you they fucked your channel <laughs> for like a year. Come on. Uh, don't do that. Don't ever do it again. As you know, what the best thing is, as doesn't give a fuck. I miss your I I miss your whiteboard thumbnails, dude. Those were epic. Those I so might bring them back. I might they bring them back. the lowest effort thumbnails They're I've ever seen. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Some of them were high effort, actually. Like some of the drawings. Yeah, you did. You did. Yeah. I did. Ones. I did a good ch big chunk of in one of them once. Yep. Uh, and I did. Uh, I did. Uh, Doctor Who's ratings falling off a cliff. I yes, think. you did. Yes, you did. Uh, Amanda was, Wayne. Oh, by great. the way, we get a Doctor Who trailer tomorrow. As. Oh, Ooh. joy. <laughs> Let's see how many trans I Does anyone watch it? I want to see you how many. Doctor Who, I, got I want to see how many trans people are in it. All of them. Yeah. All, yeah. I was going to say all of them. So if you want to know like what the difference between like nostalgia bait and uh, member berries and maybe using uh, fan service, those are three different things. David Tennant coming back is nostalgia bait. That's all it is. <clears throat> it's to bait you in <clears throat> to a Doctor Who. And, and to bring Russell T. Davies back, and he's going to be probably as woke as Chibnall, if not more, which is very sad. Very sad. Uh, Amanda Wainwright for $99.99. Wow. Damn. Woo. And it's a first, Gary, first time super chat. Ooh. And it's a girl. It's part of the 9.9. .9. Uh, well, I'm assuming. Right. Did I just assume her gender? I did. Yeah, that's right. Amanda. Uh, super chat. Ma now. Amanda Lovekiss. Now that you have decided that you're going to give One Piece anime manga a try, please, for the love of all that is holy, watch the anime subbed with original Japanese voice acting. It's amazing. The One Piece is real. Hail to the fellowship of the One Nine Nine. Uh, I absolutely <laughs> will, because uh, it's only eleven hundred episodes. It's only eleven hundred episodes, and I don't want to be listening to any yeah. of those fuck bags who try to cancel. Um, Thick. I, I th th uh, th but there might be none of them involved, but I'm not even going to risk it. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dub over sub guy. Always have been for foreign films or anything else. Uh, Dragon CM for forty nine ninety nine says Ryan like like corn. <clears throat> Ryan likes corn the broad way. Well, see you <laughs> lay turd. <laughs> I kind of want to say it the way I like an Asian would. Well, Ran like, like on the Broadway. Well, <laughs> see you later. Yeah, you read it better well, than me. Like, isn't corn the Broadway just the normal way, though, as opposed to the long way and eating it like, eating it like fucking, oh. I don't know, a weirdo? Is, wouldn't broad just I, I, be like I, I, a typewriter the way we all do it? Oh, sorry, I visualize it the long way. That's why it made me laugh. Oh. what? How do you guys eat corn? Do you do it like a typewriter or you do it like a circle? Mm, 
typewriter. 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 I fucking I cut circle. it off. I do circle. I okay. make the ding at the end too. What are you? Circle. You're barbarian. No, circle. I, I, Ryan's from the Midwest. He's from Indiana. So there you go. That Yo, I, we got a lot hey. of fucking. Well, I'm a corn expert, motherfucker. Yeah. All right. Can Can you demonstrate what a circle means? I'm, I'm actually Ohio. really confused. Oh, so you are. instead of like instead of eating it like this, like right, you eat it like. Oh, oh, that's the last. Oh my yeah. God! <laughs> are you still in Ohio, Joel, or are you somewhere else now? I am. I yeah, am. There you go. So uh, I'm just saying I know corn too. That's that's all I was saying. There you all go. Right. There and go. what's the correct way we, then, Joel? We do corn out here. Yeah. Um, I do is, it is, typewriter. You see, yeah. that's right, the cultured way. And Ryan <laughs> yep. is wrong. It's got to do. You, you, you guys even have corn in Australia? Like you grow it there? You have to import it. Of course we friggin' do. Do you grow it there? That's what I'm asking. Yes, we grow. Man, Australia has some of the most fertile. Oh, fucking all like a dirt, pile of dirt in some stupid building in Sydney. I don't know fucking shit about your man, country. Australian produce is some of the freaking best in the world. Come over here and eat some of our summer fruits. They, yeah, they eat their corn the opposite way, though. They, they go <laughs> the other way. We are upside down. Yeah. <laughs> it would be I, weird to see right, somebody right, grab a piece right, of okay. corn and go like that so, way. It, <laughs> all right, I was in Britain, uh, you know, at a, at a nice uh, hotel, and they got the nice breakfast, and so I, I was stupid enough to try some of their fruit kind of things, and their watermelon absolutely sucked balls, same with the cantaloupe, and most of the fruit that I ate over there. Bro, the bacon was better, though. Look, look as I can give you this, the bacon was better. I can oh, I do that. like rashes. So wait, when you guys eat corn, mm. do you go left to right, like the way you would read? Yes. Well, whatever you do, but backwards. Because yeah, what's well, what I'm saying? Do Japanese or fucking Chinese people do it like the other way? You think? Yeah, they I do. Australians go backwards. They eat corn like they read manga. That's <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> like I think it's natural for us to do it like that. Yeah, like does it go for Australians well, hey, like the way hey, the toilet water? No, goes. no. In the UK, they walk on the left side of the fucking path, so they do opposite the way we drive. Right. Uh, so yeah. that's that Here. was confusing because we kept on running into people for a little while. And Shad's wife had to keep pulling him, <laughs> which is funny. Yeah, you better be careful. You're there. You might get stabbed if you aren't in the wrong person. Yeah, we don't. That's a, that was a weird thing. We just in Australia, you just stand on the entire escalator, and take the whole thing yeah, up. Yeah, same with America. They don't do that in the UK. No, no, you, you got it. No, in the UK, sides, sides. Yes. Stand yeah. right, walk left. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta you keep, know what? Because people walk up. You That's know? why your fucking trains run on time, though. For 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 London, yes. the one good thing is the tube runs on time, and there's a train every five fucking minutes. So it's pretty oh, great. God. It's pretty great. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, do, you get stop waiting for it. Uh, you do, um, but uh, at least you won't get pushed in front of one like in New York. So <laughs> no, yeah. you have a chance true. to live with a knife hanging out your back or whatever. <laughs> uh, J H Swalbach, uh, a Rumble rant for one hundred. And fifteen dollars. Damn, Swalbach. Swalbach. We've met him. He's awesome. A. G. Paxton, Texas, has announced that all bushes are now illegal. I hope so, because uh, Paxton, that that was fucked up. What happened to that guy, man? Uh, all Did he fall in a bush? No, the Bush family which still tries to run this place through Carl Rove, and uh, they're all a bunch of fucking neocon uniparty fucksticks. I don't like them. Can you tell? Uh, police. Uh, yeah, I'm getting getting Texas, a hint. All police departments are reinstated. Stop and frisk. Body cam vids will be epic. Joel, please do a follow up story on this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, Ag Paxton, I guess a Texas has announced that all the bushes are now illegal. I hope so. Like Unfortunately, it. they're not. He, he meant that when we're going to be forced to shave their pubic hair, I believe. Oh, I was going to say wax. <laughs> Waxing's better. I uh, I mean, yeah, Brazil. You know, Dan Vaskland. Uh, sure. Roland the Wretched knows about that. Oh, yeah. He does. That All he right. does. We're going to wrap it up there. We're going to wrap it up there. Uh, let's go around the horn. And uh, thanks, everyone, for a, a, another show was in the books. Can't believe it. Uh, we'll start with comics division. What you got coming out? Um, well, I'm going to be uh, working on a video talking about Leslie Jones and the fact that, well, apparently she's not over what happened with um, Ghostbusters. So she oh, apparently God. released a memoir recently and uh, is still complaining about it. It's it's kind of entertaining. Uh, Joel, uh, great hanging with you, man. Uh, love the Babylon Bee. Uh, thank you for thank everything you. you guys do. Uh, great hanging with everybody as always. And I'll see you next Friday. Thanks, Comics Division. Uh, Exit A. Wait.
Uh, you can find me extra girl rumble youtube locals i also run a channel with tugs called poor choices and we're starting a show called dadcast which what the music was getting out of control <laughs> <laughs> uh where we are going to talk to dads or um people who are good role models in this oh. uh youtube world um so hopefully tuesdays 8 p.m we're working on guests and hopefully we can get some of these guys on here yes. as well so yeah yeah um and uh human cyber relations with mark as well so yeah i love that that's nice. great i like that stolen idea it's good, you know, run with it. Is Gary super loud all of a sudden? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Am I? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I mean, Your mic is louder very than hot. you had been the entire show. Is it yeah. Hot? Is it why? It's is very it hot. hot. Very yeah. hot. Is, nope. it, is it still hot? It's yeah. Hot. Yes. It's you blowed hot. my eardrums out. Very hot. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Yeah, you're good. Well, yeah, that's because well, he, he turned, turned away, away from, from the mic. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's You're supposed to have the show for your fucking IQ. How's my mic up right now? You sound yeah, like yeah, it's still loud, yeah. Is it still loud? No, you just sound like you're getting <laughs> fucked okay. by a chipmunk. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, it's actually not loud. Satan, is that you? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry. I'll back off a little bit. There we go. Is no, it's better? fine now. Right. Yeah, you're good. You're good now. All right. Uh, who do I talk to next? Chrissy Mayer. What comedy shows <gasps> do you have coming up? Uh, I'm going to be in Minnesota October 21st uh, with Lila Hart and Nick Ricada. Oh. I'll be doing something. That should be great. And then I'm back on Long Island uh, October 27th and 28th, Tampa. December 3rd and San Diego, January 5th and 6th. And also I'm trying to push my channel to a hundred thousand K subscribe. That's the same thing. A hundred thousand <laughs> subscribers. So tonight and, and for the next few weeks, I'm doing star Wars watch alongs. Tonight is the empire strikes back. Oh, wow. It starts at oh. 10 PM. Yeah. Nice. It's me. I'm going to rewatch all of it with my, uh, maybe not so smart commentary, but the last one was really fun. So, and if any of you guys like are bored and want to jump on, you're more than welcome. Ten o'clock tonight. Cool. Ten o'clock. Subscribe to Chrissy. We want to get her to 100k. Yeah. We want to get that play yeah. button. Hundred thousand k. Hundred thousand k. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want a hundred thousand k. In this one. <laughs> I'll be. I'll be. And she's gonna have enough money to go to the ATM machine and just yes. take out as much as possibly can. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you playing in San Diego? The mic drop. Was that the same place you played mm -hmm. it? Okay. Yeah. Me and Gary saw a homeless man masturbating there. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, sorry, sorry. Lovely. Gary and I. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I want to be proper. Uh, I'll see you there. I'll be there. Yay. I'll be there. Both shows. I'll be there. Screw it. Uh, Ryan, what do you got coming up? Uh, just a bunch more videos on my channel and Sports Wars and uh, Geeks and Gamers Daily Streams. You guys know where to find me. If you haven't subscribed by now, it's because you don't fucking like me. Uh, <laughs> thank you. And we don't blame you, by the way. But right. <laughs> I, yeah, there's no, I mean, yeah. yeah nothing don't blame me. No, no. Uh, thanks, Ryan. Great job, as always. Uh, Shad and Brooks. Hey. So, yeah, I mean, if people are interested, there is that uh, video out on Night's Watch about what real strength is and what, you know, actual masculinity is. And I, it's funny, I actually don't ask often for people to share any videos, and I even forgot to do it in that video. But that's the, this is the, that's the type of thing that I think is actually quite important. And so if you think it's important and it has an important message, I'd ask you to share it with people that... Uh, you think might need to hear something like that, an actual positive message about masculinity and strength to yeah, push back against some of the incorrect notions uh, that are becoming more and more popular. And also keep an eye out for a discussion that I have with Carl Benjamin, it should be coming out on the Lotus Eaters sometime, mm -hmm. about the importance of fatherhood and uh, the plight of young men. It's one of the best conversations I've ever had on the topic. And it, and it was actually something that uh, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> the conversation has stuck with me ever since. And so I'd encourage people to keep an eye out for that, the Lotus Eaters. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's something something special, that one. So uh, 
and then I think everyone knows where else I am on top of that. And also, Joel, it's been great. Father of five Thanks, represents absolutely That's awesome, right. man. Cheers. And welcome to America, Carl, by the way. He hit Miami. We saw oh, that in on Miami. Twitter. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, he got half of his pizza, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, as? Sun's getting, uh, sun's getting real Sunday, low. it is. I'm fucking knackered. I don't want to go to bed. Um, Sunday afternoon tea with Az, uh, roughly two two thirty UK time. Uh, tomorrow probably finish off separate ways DLC from Resident Evil Four Remake. So it's been a lot of fun. And then uh, hopefully next week I'll be back to full strength. So uh, we'll be putting out some videos. And some, 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 that'd be nice. <laughs> Gonna have to intervene with you and Jeremy both. <laughs> Start making videos. I'm out. I know you're ill. Thanks for being here, Alex. Uh and our thank special... you, Joel, because I love I do love uh, the Babylon Bay. Yeah, so we love. The... Uh, thank you, Joel. Great job. Thanks for coming on and putting up with us. Uh, really appreciate oh you. Gosh, Welcome back blast. anytime, man. Thank you so much, guys. I, yeah, I uh, Babylon B got the gender out this week. Uh, it's a great, great book. It's great fun. Uh, check it out. I thank you guys for what you do. I don't, um, as our, as Western civilization crumbles and our beloved stories continue to be vandalized, you guys are like a beacon of, of, of joy in the midst of it all. So I, I love you all. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a real pleasure. And Thanks for your help, the fellowship. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. thank you. Right back at you. The Babylon B is, uh, uh, is so important it, helping us laugh through like and and using mockery like you said you mm -hmm. know that's stuff we try to use you guys use to perfection and it helps make this bearable <laughs> that's it just, yeah, you know. definitely does uh, that's why we're all here man yeah yep so cheers joel uh i'll be working on my one piece review and another video so i promised the one piece review i'm going to take my time with it but perry's going to edit it we're going to have a bunch it's going to be a pure joy so i can't wait for that uh who do we have uh, next week x-ray girl uh sorry i haven't looked because i've been crazy busy it is paul chato paul chato <laughs> is back uh network executive from from canadia uh will be joining us paul's awesome paul's a great guy mm -hmm. and i uh, just want to thank my co-host for doing a great job thanks to mod Rodics for doing a wonderful job. Uh, and uh, thanks to everyone who left a super chat and donation. You help keep the lights on. And thanks for anybody who just participated or took your time. Even you lurkers out there. We know you're out there <clears throat> lurking. And that's okay. And uh, apparently, according to my uh, to my rep, a bunch of you are watching on like TVs, which is really weird. Yeah, cool. that's weird. But cool. cool. Uh, yeah. But very cool. So, th <laughs> so thanks for letting us into your living rooms. And we'll see you next week ciao bella see ya bye ciao bella Gary, some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadent, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT Blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. <laughs>
Do not come. Do not come. I'm going to come.